Hello, hello. Welcome to another Crash Force stream. Here to do as much Crash as I can stand, because as much as I love this game, I'm ready to be done streaming it. However, I did commit to all Platinums. We have uh, 11 levels left. And I would like to do as many as I can get done this stream, so that hopefully next stream will be the final one. That's my, that's my goal. I'd like to think maybe we can have the last two or three levels to do next time. We did eight last time. One of them took a while. One of them took us like an hour and a half. The rest we moved through pretty quickly. Uh, I don't know how many bad levels are in this batch. We've got this one that has like a bear riding section. And we have a... I'm, I'm kind of dreading the crate escape. I'm not looking forward to that one. Hello, Darian. However, as usual for on stream, we are... We're, I'm willing to settle for all golds on stream. I did... I have gone back and done all the platinums that... Uh, for the previous levels off stream. The ice levels sucked. The ice levels were awful. I don't know why, because it's not like... It's not slip slidey physics. It just happened to be a really bad batch of levels, those ones, for uh, getting Platinum Relics. I also spent a pretty long time on that last Dingadile level. Rock blocked? Where's the clock? Oh, we got a late clock on this one. Yeah, just making sure. It is kind of neat that uh, Nitrous Oxide is in this game. It serves to canonize the uh, racing game. Oh, we got the reversal mask. I forgot this was even a thing. I guess why wow, it's bit. It is just the last mask we get in the game, isn't it? It takes so long to get here that I just I forgot it existed. This is used heavily in the final level, which is going to be awful. I'm expecting the last stream is going to be mostly the last two levels. Those being the, uh... Like the final gauntlet, and a harder version of the final gauntlet. Not doing my best this first attempt. Alright, that's nothing. I expected that to be nothing. Uh-oh! Uh oh boy, these sections are gonna be fun. I don't know how long I'll go today. I'm, I'm prepared for a meaty stream. Maybe not quite Skyward Sword finale meaty, but meaty. Uh, so, going forward, I mentioned a few times that I recently quit my job as a school bus driver. And I'm, uh, currently trying to get by on freelance work. I think going forward, my, my plan will be to, uh, keep weekends free to stream with Jack. And I'm gonna do solo streams on Wednesdays. Other days of the week, I'll, I'll be working, so you, I'm not gonna get, not gonna be streaming on those days, but uh, weekends and Wednesdays. And I've got a few things recently that I've been looking into to uh, potentially stream. I have the, uh, so apparently similar to the Ocarina of Time one I played, there is a fan recreation of a Mario 64 Space World demo. I want to check that out. I'm thinking about a Sonic Shuffle group stream coming at some point eventually. 
Oh, that's a gap. I gotta get, like, a completed save file for that. I tried... I tried going back and playing through the campaign on my own on a single player. On an emulator, obviously. It'll look better than the old Sonic Shuffle streams, but uh, then I realized I don't want to do that. This game kind of sucks. So if I can find a complete save file just online, that'll be great. I'd much rather do that. Uh, Jack and I are probably going to be starting a new game. One or more new games soon. Some of which I've mentioned, but uh, also on the roster I remembered is uh, the Mario 64 PC port. I'm thinking about doing a randomizer of that which, with Jack. Which shouldn't take too long. That's not nearly as big a prospect as, like, a Zelda randomizer. Especially since a Mario... Ra Mario 64 randomizer generally makes the game easier. Because you just find, like, stars sitting out in places that would be, like, a coin in the original game. Although I have to confirm the PC port has a randomizer. I think it does. I think I want to do the, uh, I want to do the beta before I do the PC port. Because then I'd be able to talk about the beta with Jack. I also got a new game that is going to be a surprise. It's a little bit streamer baity, but it's also a good game. And despite being streamer baity, like, no one has played it, so. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that with Jack this weekend. We'll see how that goes. Should be fun. Warm up, that's all. It's not a shining beacon of gameplay so far, but uh, that's okay. I'm still learning the level. Also, gold is actually pretty forgiving. I don't remember the last time we failed to get a gold. Last few streams, as far as I remember, we pretty much always get it the first time we get to the level. I don't know if there's a third mask, but I gotta worry about getting invincibility. Where did you leave off again, Darian? In this game? I don't like that. I don't like that one. You can't see around it. Where am I going? What am I doing? Oh, it's an upside down. Bears are beating, that's right. It's a fitting place for me to keep asking about. like the cam camera on this level. It's all like narrow hallways that I can't see around. I, I, I'm afraid to go too fast because I'm not going to see what's coming. I was reminded recently there was a there was a relatively recent Quake game, wasn't there? It was like an, on, like an online arena shooter or something? How did that do? I'm gonna imagine not well. No, get up.
it's usually, if, if you're not too far ahead, it's usually worth to go back for time crates, even ones, because a full second is, is more than it sounds for a lot of these times. No, I didn't want to do that. I'm okay, Mr. Crate. That's all right. Ah, uh, it's not all right. Okay, it is actually all right. Oh, I don't like this level. This is stressful. I just walked into that. As strange as it sounds, as long as this is taken, I think I'm gonna miss this game when I've like 100%ed it. I'm gonna feel empty. Like this, this is what I do a lot in my free time. It's nice to have a game that I can just pull up and chip away at a bit. Which Skyward Sword was also kind of that. I ended up 100%ing that game after I finished streaming it, streaming it. It was really nice to have a Zelda game that I actually liked after uh, Twilight Princess. Sorry, Twilight Princess fans. Well, at least when I do 100% this, I can just buy the PC version and start all over from the beginning. Boy, that'll be fun. Looking forward to that. I, I probably will get the PC version eventually and do that. I don't know if it'll, it'll be right after this, but... Gotta get them Steam Achievos. It's hard to tell immediately if you're on the wall or not. And that's messing with me a little bit. No masks. Hello! Ah! Ratchet and Clank enemy! Oh, it's got a decent community around it. Oh, okay. I guess the Quake thing was more successful than I was led to believe. So we haven't found a third mask. It seems like they're only giving us two in this level. Well, so far. I don't know how much level is left. Nothing! Do you know about QuakeCon? There's a Quake convention? Quake is also id software, right? Same as Doom. Quake and Doom and, uh... Wolfenstein? Or is Quake a different company? No, Blizzard is Quake, isn't it? I'm loosely aware of boomer shooters. I don't play any of them. Sorry. I got the boomer. I don't got the shooter. So, got both masks. Somehow still got both masks. That was a mistake. Uh, okay, I survived that. That worked out somehow. 
Uh, lost one. I still don't fully understand how they're spinning on these walls. It seems so unintuitive that you would be able to do this. It's not even like a sideways spin. It just does like the normal spin animation. Where id software holds a convention for anything related to Quake, Doom, etc. So it is id. Wolfenstein, Doom, Quake. That's right. Quake is like a distant future. It's like some. Uh, it's kind of like Warhammer 40k, right? Skyward Sword randomizer for the Switch version yet. I would expect not. I know I, I suggested the motion controls throughout my entire time playing that game. Now having watched Vinny's stream of it, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't realize used motion controls in the original game. Like for the sword combat, maybe. Yeah, that, that's fine. But a lot of the, like, dumb gimmicky minigame motion controls seem like they would ruin the experience. So I don't think that I would I would play that game again on the on the original version. I think I would only play the, the one with button controls. I'm cons oh, that's another game I'm considering. Would you be up? Uh, maybe I should do a, uh, Maybe I should do a Link's Crossbow training stream. Just to see what it's like. <sighs> Come on! It's a little out of order. And I <laughs> yes, I would rather play Link's Crossbow training than any 2D Zelda. Sorry, 2D Zelda fans. Well, no, Zelda 2. I'll play that one. Any other uh, Zelda 2 fans out there? I sold a bunch of my stuff to the uh, local game shop the other day. He was very happy to get some new wares. Dude's like, uh, I think he's like lost his legs recently. And then even more recently, his door got broken into. So life just keeps dealing that guy a really bad hand. He talked about uh, wanting to sponsor the stream, but I don't know what exactly that would entail because we don't like really use gaming equipment or anything. Still a lot of nice gesture. I don't really love doing these sections upside down, but it just seems like the way to do it until that happens. I keep going too high somehow. I'm, I'm double jumping too early, I guess. The problem is that she flings herself off of the wall with such force. I wish she just, she knew if it was the last one and she did not need to fling herself so forcibly.
to remember what the other levels in this world are like. I think there's at least one more like this. I think the second one has way more of those little dudes with the guns. Once I remember the level again, the last level might be pretty fun. I remember it being enjoyable anyway, the, the wacky shit they have you do with the, uh, the inversion mask. My least favorite mask for time trials is definitely the, uh, the first one, where you phase objects in and out. That's, that is such a pain to keep track of for time trials. Especially since I have to check both versions. Uh, it's not immediately obvious if a phased out box is a time box or not. Yeah, I, I have to look pretty closely or just me memorize. She goes so far. Why she gotta go so far? Okay, new territory. Oh, here we go. Another one of these sections. Ah, no, please. Just lost both masks. There is a third mask here. So there are, in fact, three masks on this level. If I somehow got all three... This is the section that I would have the uh, invincibility for. Which seems cool, but not totally necessary. So maybe it's not, not a big deal if I lose a mask or two. Oh, uh, you were also you were re replaying some of the original trilogy stuff, weren't you, Darian? How'd that go? You get the first two masks so quickly, and then the third one is way off and off in the distance. I would have to survive a long time with these two. Yeah, get up there. First Island's Platinums. I don't remember any there being too bad, except maybe Jungle Rollers. The lab sucked. The lab sucked ass. Because that whole level is getting just timing shit to line up right. And I don't remember exactly what it was. There's some quirk about how the levels load in the Insane Trilogy that makes it even more annoying. Like in the original games, you could count on the level to always load everything at once at the start. But it doesn't reload everything in Insane, and that messes with the timing. <sighs> Every time. I never made highlights of my uh, Crash 1 regular playthrough. Well, original or Insane Trilogy. The original streams are just extremely old at this point, but uh, the Insane Trilogy... Was unfortunately kind of ruined by... I had some kind of microphone issue or something. That was only resolved by the time we did the last stream. Which is why the only Crash 1 stream is the, uh... The Stormy Ascent Death Reel. It was the only highlights video, rather.
Things are a little Zelda-centric at the moment. We just did a bunch of Zelda games. Uh, I have highlights in the works for... Our uh, randomizer stream. And also Hyrule Warriors. I've been putting off for a long time. Which we played that back when we were in the middle of the like first Majora's stream. Also need to get started on uh, Twilight Princess now that we and Skyward Sword now that we've totally finished those. Oh come on, that was one. I got hit by the boxes going upward, quote unquote. Sorry if these streams get podcasty. I just, I don't really know what else to say except, ah, uh, oh, ah, darn it. That, that, that's kind of, these streams get very, like, repetitive, the time trials. That's okay, though. I'm getting a little better each time, I tell myself. The lab was the worst time trial in Crash 1, with the possible exception of Stormy Ascent. I have to think about it, is how bad the lab was. Stormy Ascent definitely took me longer, so I guess the lab would not be as bad as that. What if in the next... What if there's a Crash 5? And they have a relics... They have different types of relics. The way they now have different, like, types of gem challenges. What if they have one that requires that you get all the gems? What if they combine Insane Relic and Time Trial Relics? That sounds like a nightmare, but it also sounds not outside the realm of, poss realm of possibility. Like, how fast can you collect all the boxes on a stage? If those existed originally, that would make, uh... That would make Cortex power horrible. With all the branching paths. The fact that you don't have to get all the boxes is what makes, uh, time trials... ...more bearable in, in some ways. What was it? Elf King recently said he was predicting that in the next Smash game, a character would have the ability to uh, regain stocks. I don't think they would do that. I think they at least have the sense not to do that, but it's also not a non-zero possibility. off at the end. I thought, why am I going down? I can, I can just spin this guy if I'm up here, but no, they, they don't let you do that. Wait, why is there a... Oh, there's a ghost for the Sapphire Relic. That's something I could pick up again. Is, uh, I could... Plug in, uh, Team Racing Nitro Fueled. I needed a break from that game. Uh... 
what do I have left to do in it? It was a lot of it was a lot of time trial stuff. Also, finding every one of those crates for that stupid uh, exclamation box character. That itself is such a huge task. Because there are so many tracks in that game. It is a big game. There's a lot of stuff in Nitro Fueled. I was amazed when they added Hero. Not as a character, but when they gave him, like, blatant RNG mechanics, because I also thought that they had, like, embraced the competitive side more. Like, Steve's imbalance, I can see, is, like, you know, an oversight. The fact that he's the last character in the game, they didn't have the chance to balance him with future patches, but... Giving a character in what is otherwise at least a little bit designed to be a competitive game. Just straight up RNG. It's a, that's baffling to me. It was baffling to everyone. Why is Smash so Sundere with its community? a lot of stuff happening. I can't keep track of it all. Fuck! Fuck! Ugh. Sorry for these noises. Those are my panic noises. I'm panicking a little bit. And then we have this clusterfuck hallway. I do have one mask left. Never mind. No, I still have it. I couldn't even tell. Okay, and then we go down. And then we have another rail section, right? I feel like I remember that. Oh boy, here we go. There's a lot of stuff happening. Is that the end? That's the end. Okay. Please give me gold. 127. Uh, seven seconds. That's not too bad. That's doable. Alright, and now we do it again, but with Cortex. I remember there's a Cortex level where he has to, like, jump between, uh, like, hotel luggage carts. I don't think it's this one. There's all. I did, it just occurred to me. Cortex doesn't have a way to actually kill enemies. To find that ship. Uh, he can, he can only block them. With that hair dry function. Okay, we're going. To, we're just scouting this first run. Well, what's down here? It's kind of weird to think the villain of the game is, in terms of gameplay, he's a pacifist. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, none of those are time crates. That's, that's wonderful. Uh-oh. Okay. That room's gonna be fun. I don't think I struggled on the luggage segment. I just remember it existing. I think that was in the snacks dimension. That, that was a memorable world. I like that world. I'm gonna make sure there's nothing up there. I think there's just an exclamation box to activate those little crates. I'm really just hoping there's no more, like, shitty geometry. That really ruined that jungle cortex level. 
That made it so much more painful than it needed to be. Oh, there's a bunch. Okay, so we do need, we do need to go this way. I see. Well, I'm glad I checked. finished watching uh, Hey Arnold. I've been going through that recently. Uh, it did not hold up, as I hoped, as a show overall. It only had a, ha a small handful of, like, really good, you know, feel-good episodes. A lot of them were just kind of, you know, goofy cartoon stuff. Let me just make sure. Nope, nothing over here. Most of the best episodes were Helga episodes. I, I can see why she was like the breakout character. Uh, I also watched the movie they made recently. Recently as in, what was it, like 2019? Wait, what? You're supposed to be bouncy. What's wrong? Do can I not turn them bouncy in these stages? I can. Why why was that one not bouncy? Oh, this is going to suck. Okay. I got to I got to do exclamation box stuff. These are, this is like a puzzle level. This isn't good. I don't like this. This is gonna be such a pain. God damn it. This is a level I would describe as not designed for time trials. Uh, I, was, I don't remember if it was exactly 2019. It was it was recent, but uh, it wasn't bad. The recent movie might have been the best part of the series if you watched the series up to that point, because it was uh, it was the kind of it was the kind of thing that had a lot of fan service for for uh, fans of the show. It was full of references without like compromising the movie itself. Which is nice. It's nice when they do that. That doesn't make it a good movie, being full of references. But uh, I get. I guess it's just these monkey guys can't turn bouncy. There's a lot of like. There's been a there's been a lot of cases of people like remaking or trying to appeal to nostalgia in a lot of these old shows and just failing fuller house comes to mind there was apparently a, a sopranos there was a recentish sopranos thing that was just it, it had like it was a prequel it had a bunch of like different actors doing impressions of the original actors. I don't know anything about The Sopranos, but it sounds like the kind of thing that would bug me. This particular, uh, new Sopranos. Yeah. Ah. I don't like this. This sucks. Ah, 
you gotta be here, monkey. playing One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. I would love to play that game. I bought it on Steam. Unfortunately, they didn't bother to, like, make it actually work with PC controllers or anything when they ported it. So, uh, I own it and I cannot play it. I could use, like, keyboard and mouse, but I'm not gonna do that. So, it's just, it's just sitting in my library. It's either four or three. I might have three. I bought the last one that included, like, all the arcs up till that point. I think four is when they start, like, skipping stuff, right? Yeah, the uh, One Piece ones are the... are the ward non... Hyrule Warriors game that I'm, like, most interested in. But they, they fucked up the port, so I can't do much. Four is when they skip most of the arcs. Okay, I, I, have, uh, I have three then. Okay, so I guess it's just where they are on an enemy-by-enemy enemy basis. It's decided whether they turn into bouncers or into uh, clear ones. Yeah, they did bring Futurama back for the... Was it the third time now? That's a little different, though. That's, uh, that's bringing a series back as opposed to... Uh, like, a quote-unquote new new series or reboot that's trying to just kind of prey on the nostalgia of, of the original. And like I said, the Hey Arnold one, it reference it shows knowledge of the original show, like it references it, without, like, that being all it has to offer. It was very strange because uh, a lot of the original actors are... Well, it uses a lot of kid actors. So most of the... Like, half of the cast is different in the 2019 era movie. Including some of the adults. Some of the adults... Uh, there was, like, a dedication at the end of the credits. Some of the, act, some of the original actors died. But it was just it was just slightly off. It was like post Jim Henson Muppets was the voices in that movie. Why are you what gun? Go farther. Why you stop? Nope. Jim Henson had a wait-and-see attitude. Now we have wrong-sounding Muppets. This guy is in just the worst spot. I know they did that on purpose. And this monkey, too. He's waiting. He's spawn-camping me. Shot one too many times.
I wonder, could I fire a shot and then outrun it to the... Nah. Almost. I might be, that might be the way to do it, like, the fastest. Fire and then get the clock. Yeah, look at that. <sighs> I'm glad the bazooka isn't in this game. Because I don't have to do any dumb shit like uh, stand next to some crates and aim backwards at the clock or anything. That's really tight, that window for those. I'm sure that can be one cycled. I'm just, I'm missing my chance. This might be my least favorite time trial level so far. Not because it's the hardest, it's just the most poorly designed for time trials. At least the Cortex section is short. It's pretty bad, though, having to go to, like, off-map areas and do puzzles to go back and forth to unlock new... It, it just it is bad. I don't like that. Getting to the end, though. There's that guy. We still got a mask. I'm ass assuming because this is half a level, we don't have to get three masks. We got two. That's nice. Maybe there will be a third one. You need to get out of here. Okay. Ah, TNT. I'm flying blind. I know this level, but I don't know this version of this level. This is this is the Hall of Fuck with all the enemies. We are past the Hall of Fuck. Just the final rail section now. Which is fine. I love rail sections in these. I say, and then immediately get hit! <sighs> that was good. At least I know the whole level now. <sighs> hey! 
anytime I don't have to worry about the stupid, like, spin mechanic is a good part of the level, in my opinion. Granted, I don't have to worry about that through most of the Cortex section, and the Cortex section still kind of sucks. What other things are, uh... The Hey Arnold movie was like a Paramount Plus thing. What other things are getting, like, weird... What other very old properties are getting new things on streaming services? Because that's happened a few times now. I can't wait for the, uh... What, what probably... We could get an Ed and Eddie reboot. I don't know about Reboot, but like, uh, you know, 2024 Ed, Ed, and Eddie animated feature or something. That doesn't feel outside the realm of possibility at all. Rugrats, that's right. There was like a, there was like a Rugrats reboot series in 3D we talked about. There's some things that have just gotten like movies, though. Like one-offs. What's the last thing they did with Powerpuff Girls? Was it the was it the the Cartoon Network series with the Gongoro girl? Have they dared to do anything with Powerpuff since then? Ah, come on. Blood shenanigans. I can't wait for them to uh, attempt to do a new uh, Code Lyoko thing again and fuck it up again. Because it's one of the only three cartoons anyone knows about from France. There's apparently a uh, like really elaborate fan continuation of Code Lyoko. In like 3D, it was like fully 3D animated with like uh, voice acting and everything. It's a very professional looking production for a fan work. I don't think there's a lot to do left in the series. I don't think it needed a continuation, but still impressive for fans to have done it. Are there people making, like, uh... Are there fan episodes of Friendship is Magic? I know there's, like, a huge fan creation community. Has anyone, like, dared to just say, Okay, we're gonna make season 10, and they just, they made a series of episodes on YouTube. Has anyone done that? If not, I'm kind of surprised. But at the same time, I can see... Oh, but, like, people not wanting to not acknowledge a lot of the late, later season stuff in that show. Lost a mask there, that's okay. Cortex doesn't need his masks. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm at just the right jump height to, uh... how many of those kind of situations there are. We're just fans deciding they're going to continue cartoon shows. Is, is Are there fan edit Eddie episodes? 
I don't mean like fan animations, like fans that try to imitate the original style and voice acting and everything. Like legitimately trying to make episodes. That's just TNT. I didn't need to worry about that. Fan Dexter's Lab. I don't know how many people could do Dexter's accent to do a Fan Dexter's Lab. I don't think the original actress knew what accent she was doing. Does anyone know what Dexter's accent was? A Warner Brothers horror movie called Orphan got a prologue on Paramount Plus. I don't know what that is. That that that's a little different though. I should just bounce off this. It seems like the fastest method. I don't need to be shooting it. Kind of wish I could shoot the clock, but I guess that would introduce the uh, the Wumpa Bazooka problem. <sighs> Wonder what's going to be going on with the uh, multiverses. They're really gonna have to, like, advertise the hell out of that game before the launch if they want another chance. I don't think they I don't think they will get another chance. I think the game's just kind of gonna kind of fizzle out from here. But we'll see. I think there's like uh there's like fan episodes of Star Trek or there's a there's a fan ser Star Trek series on YouTube that I've heard is like surprisingly high production value. It might even have gotten like some original cast members, which is very impressive for a show like that. I'm also not a Star Trek fan, so I might just be talking out of my ass. I don't Okay, I'm gonna stay down. I'm not gonna go up again. Now I'll go up on this one. The, the next rail is the one that I, like, stay down for the entire time. I like that the genre of music for these levels is, like, Surfer Theremin. It's like Spooky Beach Boys. This would be the music in an episode of Scooby-Doo, where the Beach Boys guest appear. Stay down. There we go. We got another mask. I'm golden. I'm good. This is it. This is the run. We almost had the run that last time. What am I doing? Where am I going? I'm getting shot. I hate these monkeys. The last the last level of this game is just going to be full of shit like this, isn't it? I'm going to be doing these inversion sections just constantly being shot by enemies. Cortex doesn't use the uh, L button for his gameplay at all. All the other characters do. Like for Tana, it's her uh, it's her hook shot. For Dingadial, it's his suction. What's Scooby Doo doing these days? 
I know they never stop making Scooby-Doo content. I just, I wonder what the most recent has been. I guess it was Velma, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't need to, never mind. Forget I asked what Scooby-Doo's doing these days. I bet they had plans to give that Velma, like, an alt in, in multiverses. And now they're, uh... Now, now they just won't. I don't know anything about that show. The new Velma show. I, I just know, like, people hated it. At least that is the common opinion that I have heard. Cortex can a few uh, can afford to lose a mask or two. In levels like these, the uh, the first character's masks don't uh, transfer, so the only function these masks serve is for uh, Cortex to take hits. So you kind of want to find areas of the level that you can save time by eating a hit is their optimal use. something I've been thinking about recently. The Mario RPG got a remake announced. Looks cool. I'm happy for fans of the game. I'm not one of them. Jack is. I'm sure he's uh, he's excited for it. They're definitely going to get rid of uh, Peach's question mark, question mark, question mark in the remake. So in the original Mario RPG, which was made by Square Enix, not Nintendo, there was a section of the game where you you were in Peach's bedroom, and you could look behind a bookshelf and find, in Japanese, an item called Peach's XXX. Changed in English to uh, Peach's question, 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 which is a little more subtle. Still not that subtle, really. The other thing I'm kind of wondering about is uh, there's an item called a Muku Cookie. Which you can only get in the game briefly, dur like during a brief story event, but it's an item that uh, costs 69 coins and heals 69 HP. There's no in-game significance to the number 69. They knew exactly what they were doing. That might stay. We might still have the Muku Cookie. I don't think we're going to keep Peach's item. And that got me to wondering, I'll bet that was a part of why Nintendo doesn't let anyone else handle their IPs anymore. It was it was kind of a... There was a lot of shit like that. Well, not like that specifically, but... Uh, there was a period in the 90s... and the 80s... Between the, uh, the Super Mario cartoons... That... And uh, the Philips CDI games. The Mario Brothers movie, the first one. I'll bet all of that kind of contributed to... They, they, they gave their properties to a lot of schlock. It's kind of their own fault in some ways, but... I guess that this... Like, other, other video game stuff at the time was not any better. 
Like, I say it's Nintendo's fault that the Mario show ended up the way it did, but... Like, what do we have for comparison? The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Captain N. It was all a lot of shows that didn't really represent the video games. And also kind of seemed written by people who did not play the video games. They just kind of stopped trusting anyone with the IP until, uh... Until the more recent Mario movie came about. I guess that's not completely true. There's like... Well... There's Pokemon games, but that's not specifically Nintendo. That's like, that's the Pokemon company. Which is closely related to Nintendo, but not specifically Nintendo. Nintendo does not make all the decisions regarding the Pokemon franchise. if it quite counts, but we got, like, a live-action Kim Possible movie years after anything had been done with the series. I wonder that. That was probably, like, 2012. Maybe later was the live-action Kim Possible movie. Probably later than that, even. Okay, I really need my masks for this end section, because this end section just blows. This part is such a pain. Ah, I need the... There, there they go. There go my two masks. Now I gotta play careful. I'm not supposed to be playing careful. This is time trials. There's still more level. I gotta get to the rails. We're almost there. I don't even know what time I'm going for. This is, a, this is one of the long time levels, though. We're at 210. Okay, here we go. 215. Come on, give me gold. Give me the gold. Alright. Less than 10 seconds from platinum. Alright, that's two levels done. For a little over an hour. Stowing away, what was this level? Was this level similar to the first one? It looks tube-like. Looks very tubical. Let's do Crash. Oh, he still has his, like, high-pitched voice. The woe was kind of a standout. Like when he when he when he does the the woe, that's not what he sounds like in all of his other voice clips. Oh boy, we gotta we gotta crawl. No, we don't. We just gotta slide. Little crawling, just a little. Boy, there's a. Uh... There's a lot of lasers here, aren't there? That one, that woe is more in his normal voice. It's just a weird outlier, I guess. And yet that's the best the meme line, so that's the voice that's the voice everyone knows, not the da 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 da. Did, uh... Brendan O'Brien still voiced him in this game, didn't he? 
We're gonna have to find someone else who can go whoa for the next crash. Or they'll just use AI. That, that, they'll probably do that. They'll probably just use AI. I, I hate to say that. Okay, that's right. I gotta invert. I gotta do the pipes. Uh-oh. Uh, that's like a gem area or something. Was that mask number three? No, 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 no. What are we doing? Hello. What are we doing? Okay, I gotta I gotta move through fast. The first few runs always suck because they're just memorization. I just I gotta relearn the level. I'm more impressive in like the end scene trilogy because I already know all of the levels so well. I don't have that advantage for this game. Jack and I are, uh, among the shows we're watching is, uh, Amphibia. We finished Owl House. We're still reaching the end of Amphibia. And, uh, similar to Owl House, the show's fallen off a little bit for me. I still enjoy it. Like, the problem with both of these shows for me has been that, uh, like, I like, I like the characters but they just kind of don't do anything with them. For the most part, these Disney tunes just kind of play it safe a lot. Which is what I... I, th I think that's why Star Versus is my favorite of them, is because even though it had a lot of... It had a lot of flaws. There, there were a lot of problems with Star. It had a lot of misses with the jokes, even. But it took risks, and it made, uh, it made like, commentary. I appreciated that about it. It was willing to tackle things that the other shows kind of aren't willing to. Nope, I need that. <sighs> Dead. Run crab and <laughs> noises. I don't remember if I mentioned this on stream. It might have been on the Skyward Sword streams. There was a, uh, I think Microsoft was attempting to buy out Activision, which failed at least in part because of like uh, antitrust groups. I really want, like, a company besides Activision to own Activision stuff. I want, I want more games in these series, and not for, like, studios to go have to, like, dissolve or make Call of Duty games and nothing else. As I understand it, that was the fate of the, uh, there were planned Tony Hawk 3 through 4 remakes. And they basically fell through because the company that would have been making them was uh, instead recruited to uh, make Call of Duty games. I don't remember if that was the case for... Uh... No, these were toys for Bob's, these games. Wait, what hit me? What happened? 
I lost a mask, and I don't know what I lost it to. It looks tubular? Well, it looks tubular. I wasn't paying atten attention. What was that comment about? Brendan O'Brien was only the OG trilogy. Oh, okay. Yo, when are we getting a when are we getting a rocket power reboot? I can't wait to see a like CG rocket power on Paramount Plus. That's like the that's the Viacom one, right? That's the, all all the Nick stuff goes on Paramount Plus. Whoops, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. There's no floor there. Early Nickelodeon was like 80% Klatsky Xuppo. Weird name for a studio already. Uh, they did Rugrats, Wild Thornberries, Rocket Power, Ah Real Monsters. I don't think... They, did they do Cat Dog? I don't think they did Cat Dog. Just an absurd amount of early Nick stuff. It was it was pretty much just Klatsky Xuppo and like uh, Ren and Stimpy. Was that era of Nickelodeon. <laughs> and then they got Spongebob and uh, that's all she wrote. From that point on, Spongebob was the entirety of the Nickelodeon channel. That's a little hyperbole. It's not entirely Spongebob, but it is... Compared to, like, Cartoon Network and even Disney Channel, Nickelodeon has a history of, like, not really experimenting on new shows. They, they give a lot of priority to, uh, shows with proven success. That's why Spongebob has, is, like, still going, and Fairly Odd Parents got, what, like, 20 seasons? Danny Phantom. That's something that could be rebooted. Rebooted or continued. I don't know how I'd feel about that. I bet that would act people would be happy about that He was just, just kind of pandering for money like people I people would definitely be down with like a, a paramount plus Danny Phantom CG something or other I would say as long as they don't fuck it up, but I don't imagine how they could because Having watched it recently, Danny Phantom was not that high a bar. It was a fine show, it was average, I guess. It's mostly carried by nostalgia. We're, get we're getting more Avatar. The Last Airbender is getting like a uh, new animation. Is it was it was it CG? I don't remember. They did the Jumanji cartoon. There was a Jumanji cartoon. I don't remember that. I know they did the, they did the McDonald's cartoon. They did a very strange looking, you know, obviously Klatsky Xuppo looking McDonald's cartoon that was like. Uh, I think it was included in like in like Happy Meals or something. It was part of a promotion, but there's a Rugrats styled McDonald's cartoon. And accompanying Lego set. I had the Lego set. No, go down! <sighs> I kind of want to see, like, other series in the style of Klatsky Xuppo. 
Not because it's an attractive style, I'm just, I'm morbidly curious how it might look. I want to see Rugrat-style Jimmy Neutron. Rugrat-style Peter Griffin. Oh, that's cursed. Never mind, I don't want to picture that. Oh, come on! I hate that. I hate that. Why do I only hit the bottom one of that? It feels arbitrary whether I get to those flame blocks with a good timing or not. Which is kind of what I was talking about with the level spawn thing. The levels don't... The levels in this game don't feel like they always spawn... Always start under the same exact conditions. I also don't know why I have to slide into that. Clearly it's walking height level. Come to think of it, how tall is Crash? I'm sure he has, like, a cannon height. No! Wrong button! I'm getting it. I'm slowly learning. Yep, just arbitrary. Maybe I should check behind me when I come out of the tube, just in case there's like some three boxes there. Or something like mean like that. That doesn't even care if you have masks, it just kills you. No, thankfully they did not include any boxes back there. There's just an invisible wall. Somehow I didn't hit that TNT. See, I'm learning. I'm getting the level. Very slowly. That, that, that slide is just the wrong distance. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is the... Oh, this is the third mask. Okay, that's great. So I, I need all three masks for this. Oh, this section. God damn it. I remember this shit. This isn't what I want to do in a time trial. What are you doing? Let me in! That's gonna be annoying. Maybe I can still get gold. Maybe this is just forgiving enough. Alright, rail section. No? Oh, not this guy! So got two masks. Literally. Okay, that, that was not a long section. Good. Come on, gold. Alright. Ten seconds away. Yeah, we haven't failed to get a gold in a while. I'm happy about that, at least.
three levels. Hour and a half. All right. Crash landed. Here we go. This was the first level that I was worried about. Maybe it won't be as bad as I'm thinking. Because it's just memorization, the, the bare parts. Unfortunately, you, you, you got to do the whole level up until that before you get the chance to start memorizing. Because I like the bare parts in Crash. I, I need, like, time trial checkpoints. I need, I need to, like, practice each section of the level, and then I'll do the whole thing. Oh. Uh. Oh, that's right. There's ice physics here. Darian. What do you know about Diablo? I was talking with uh, Kelly, the dude at Legendary Games, and he said that the new Diablo was on PS3? And I was very confused by that statement, because that can't be true. No way they would release Diablo 4 on the PlayStation 3, right? That didn't happen. Okay. Yeah, good TNT. All right. I was gonna say, I don't know what he was on about. <laughs> that's two generations old. That's like when they put the... That's when they put uh, Just Dance on the Nintendo Wii. It was like 2020 or something? It was the last Nintendo Wii game. I don't like these, these vents. Pretty sus. Here we go. Alright, now how much do I actually have to run with this thing is the question. And how much of it is just, uh... Oh, that's TNT. God damn it. Why is there a time crate on that? I gotta, like, jump at just the right moment? I do have to jump at just the right moment for those. Diablo 3 is on the PS3. Okay. Maybe he just didn't know that Diablo 4 had come out. Is Diablo 3 on the Switch? Is that the one with Ganondorf in it? Come on. I'll get it eventually. I'll get exactly the, the timing and position to bounce on this crate. See? Told you. No, I need that. <sighs> Stupid world turtles. Jellyfish I gotta worry about. Forest Temple music. It's kind of telling about the Forest Temple music that it sounds vaguely similar to uh, music that's supposed to be for an alien world. It's not completely. It was just like a section of it that reminded me of the Forest Temple. Oh, I gotta do... That's a very... That's a very precise jump I gotta do for that one box. Surprisingly, alien worlds are not very hospitable. I mean, maybe, maybe that's surprising. I don't know. Krypton looked pretty hospitable before it got got. Oh. Uh, so while we were watching Amphibia earlier today... I guess a, a slight spoiler. Season 3 has, like, a... 
like a, a like a war torn kind of thing going on. There's like guerrilla factions and sit and shit to the degree of like like uh, like Saturday morning Sonic with the Freedom Fighters. And yet it's still a, a like it's still a Disney cartoon. So everyone's popping one-liners and just like acting goofy with each other. Kind of acting like there's no stakes to anything. It, it's still being a cartoon is what I'm saying. And it's very jarring because like th this is the ha this is the happiest most optimistic Mad Max post-apocalypse that I've ever seen. Jack made a comparison to, like, the uh, uni Universe 6 Saiyans. But I guess they're not really in, like, a... Like, a post-apocalyptic kind of setting. They're, they're in, like... That was the advanced Saiyans. The, the, those were the Saiyans with the cushy lives. What's the hardest time trial so far? Gave up a couple years back. Got back to it a couple days ago. Managed to finish four aisles. What was the hardest so far? Uh... You know, it's I've been at this so long, I don't remember most of the early levels. I have all the streams archived. I'd have to see which one took me the longest. Uh That one cortex level from last stream with the, the janky hitboxes, the janky geometry. That took me an hour and a half just to get the gold, and then probably another hour past that to get platinum. I was at Rock Blocked, the most recent Dinga Dial level for a while, but I don't think I want to say that was the hardest. Bears Repeating was pretty bad. I'm worried about this one for the same reason, but at least... At least the, the like, the mount sections on these kinds of levels... It's a lot of, like, uh, falling down. Excuse me. I feel like this this so far just structurally as a level is not as bad as the uh, as the polar bear one. Trying to remember all the places that you need to run, you need to not run. Also, I still I can't I haven't managed to get that uh, that jump yet. Bears repeating insanely perfect is one of the reasons I gave up. That probably took a while. I did all of the insanely perfect relics off stream. I don't remember how bad those got. I remember some of them getting pretty bad. Oh, it's gonna ruin my one cycle. No, I still got it. I have all of the gems, and I have all of the insanely perfect relics by this point. So all that I have left is the time trials. I did most of the collecting off-stream because I knew that they were it was going to suck. It was going to take a lot of time to get all that shit. <laughs> That's the one. I also keep hitting that. Okay, run, please. How am I... Oh, I need to bounce on the on the bouncer. I, I'm blind. I thought I just needed a running jump. No, that's, that's Crash 3 where you do that. Alright. I get there. And I die. Alright, good to know. I complained about the snow levels a lot. I don't remember if there were any other levels that I, like, went to, went on Discord and complained about afterwards. I think Rock... I think Rock Blocked was the one that, uh... That, that took me, like, several days of attempting. 
I think that was the one last stream that I was, like, over 20 seconds short of the platinum time. That's the part. That That's the, like, the... I guess that's more Woodfall Temple than uh, Forest Temple. Like that wailing sound effect. Okay, no, that wasn't the one. Man! Okay, I missed one crate. And then this one I go up. Yeah, get some more of those. I find you actually don't want to run very much on these levels because if you miss if you miss like one one crate then you've lost more time than uh, if you like run to go a little faster. If you know you can get all the crates, well, I'm sure the toys for Bob relics, the, the staff times those probably run the whole way and also manage to get all the crates somehow. But yeah, that's like... I, I can't even like comprehend how some of those times are gotten. That's like actual pro speedrunner shit. I have to think like they, they must be using some kind of glitches, but... They wouldn't do that for staff times, would they? Maybe that maybe in Crash 4 they would. I don't know. In any case, I'm never I'm never getting any of those. Maybe I'll like uh, at the end of these streams I'll look at my times to see which one I got closest to. To the uh, the staff time for. Okay, we're good. So far, so good. I always eat that. And then these two. I got some muscle memory for this level, just from doing it so many times over again. Okay, invincibility. That is the third mask. Good place for it. Ah, it's a pit! Going blind now. No, I need that! <sighs> Where am I going? No, I need that. <sighs> okay, I got another mask. They're okay. Well, they're generous with the masks after this point, at least. I couldn't see what crate that was because the lighting. I'm sorry, that's a very whiny voice. I don't want to do that. Ah, momentum! There better not be an achievement for getting, like, a Toys, a toys for Bob relic. Maybe I could get one on one level somewhere in the game. So, so probably not, though. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna safely guess that I would not be capable of doing that. Which is telling, because I'm... I'm a pretty big Crash fan. I've gotten all Platinums in every Crash game so far. Other than, the, you know, the PS2 ones, we're going to talk about those. But, I like to think I'm pretty good at these games. Not by Toys for Bob standards, though. No, to them, I'm just a, I'm just a scummy casual. I got a better shot of becoming, like, the best Smash Ganon. 
am I do getting all the toys for Bob Relics in this game? shit for no reason. Oh, I needed that mask. No, now I'm not going to have the invincibility. Even this game is like, this is way harder than original Crash 3, which was itself harder than uh, Ensane Trilogy relics. The Ensane Trilogy had like the easiest version of all the, re of all the relics. Even the Crash 3 times were like a lot more forgiving in the insane version. Just uh, losing masks. That's okay. I don't need them. Masks are for Hylians. Oh, that's not the one that bounces me. That's a danger. Alright, cool. Didn't need that. How do I get... I can jump on the crate, I guess. I don't know if... I don't remember how you would, like, normally deal with those enemies. Picked up the Crash Rumble? What? Is, what is Crash Rumble? You said gamer score, so I'm assuming it's on Xbox. I'm not familiar with that particular game. That's not the that's not the arena fighter because that's not out yet, right? It is the new game. Oh, it is out. When did it release? I'm not terribly interested in it, especially for, like, 30 bucks, but... Is it... it does it have cross-play? Like, or are you only playing with other Xbox players? I think Activision is usually good about cross-play. Rare time that I'll say anything positive about them, but... Maybe a week? Okay, if it comes out in a week, how did you play it? Is there, like, a demo? Oh, that doesn't get me the mask, does it? I forgot. I can't blow up masks in this game. I can only do... I think that works in Crash 2 and 3. You can, like, TNT uh, an Aku Aku and still get it. Okay, I got two masks. If I can last a little longer, I might be able to get a third one again. What are you? How do I get rid of you? I don't? I see. Oh. Oh, that was a... Fuck! What am I doing? Whatever. I'm here. I'll bet there's another bear right... Yeah, there's another bear right in section. Bear, quote unquote. No, that's slippery. I couldn't jump. Oh, came out like a week ago. Okay. Sorry, I can't play uh, full attention to the chat. That's a good cycle. I like that. I want to do that more often. 
It, it does seem pretty good that I uh, hold on to my masks. I do want to keep my masks on this level. Is it even on Steam, Crash Rumble? Or is it only on, uh, like, one of the other platforms, Epic Games or something? <sighs> Always that flower. Are they still trying to do that? Because they finally put... They finally put Crash 4 on Steam. Which I, I guess I appreciate. It's too little too late, but I'll, I'll probably buy it. When it goes on sale. If it goes on sale. Oh, go right. Go right. Ah, missed one. Still just two masks. Ah, ah, still got two, somehow. No! That was the wrong button. It's okay. I got this. This is the run. This is the run. This is the time. Rumble is crossplay. Okay, that's good. It better have crossplay, because I don't think... How many people are going to pay $30 for Crash Bandicoot Overwatch? I'm a pretty big Crash fan, and I'm not going to pay that much for it. I would... If it were free, I would try it. That's about the most I can say about... Crash Rumble, I'm sorry to say. Well, what do you what do you guys think about it? Since you have played it, what what are your thoughts? You said you just played it for like the uh, the gamer score. You filled out the achievements. Which is apparently very easy to do, by the sound of it. This flower. This fucking flower. Okay, got all those crates. Okay, invincibility, good. I'm playing with the uh, delayed sound, as I have to when I stream console games, so... It's not always immediately obvious to me whether I've gotten something. No! I, <laughs> I actually survived, and I didn't realize in time. Uh... Super addicting. Found, my safe, f found myself saying one more game a lot. Such an arbitrary genre for a crash game that needs to do a lot to convince me to spend $30 on it. How much is Overwatch? I'm okay, because it, it seems like such a you have to play Fortnite isn't free to play, is it? I'm always I'm surprised with all of these like blowout games when they're not free to play, because that, that seems like the only way anymore to get a really big audience. Which you need for a game like that. Because if there aren't people playing it, then, you know, who are people going to play online against? That wasn't good. That was a little, little, little time wasted. Overwatch is free to play. Was it always free to play? I 
I haven't played most of these games. These, uh, like, big, trendy games that everyone plays. I never played for- I was mildly curious about Fortnite because I watched culling streams and I was kind of interested in Battle Royale games, but, uh, I don't think I'd like the building aspect of Fortnite. And also, I- I guess I just, just never got around to trying it. I know there's the no-build mode now, but... Eh. I mean, I, I'm, I'm past it. Okay, two masks. Unfortunately, I need invincibility to get that particular pile quickly. Okay, here we go. Last bear section. Oh, that's right. It is Overwatch 2 now, isn't it? I forgot we were on a sequel. I think I remember, like, Overwatch 2 being announced, and I was surprised that they would do that. I was like, why not just update original Overwatch forever? I don't know, though. I don't know enough about that game to comment. I'm still ma I'm still waiting on Awesome Knots 2. We never got that. Oh, I'm missing so many boxes. This is... Maybe it'll still be gold. I don't know how forgiving this will be. There's one. I got one three. Get all those. Yeah, give me those boxes. There's so many! Oh boy, here we go, here we go. Eh. Why is this section so long? End! End the level! CONCLUDE! I'm afraid to run because I'm gonna miss box- Oh, there's a falling section. I missed a box already. Uh, okay, that seems like a good route, that far right one. This sucks. This section sucks. I happened to pick the right route by chance, I think. I don't like it, though. Oh, and then there's this whole part. I was right to be dreading this level. This level's gonna blow ass for platinum. Okay, we got gold. We need uh, almost 20 seconds off. Oh, that one's gonna be fun. Definitely needs more game modes and more characters. You're talking about uh, Crash Rumble, right? Who's in it? What can what 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 differs by characters? What's the, what's actually what's the goal of the game again? It's a it's like collect fruit, right? You collect the most fruit and you stop the enemy team from collecting fruit. Which doesn't sound like a very satisfying competitive game in in my opinion. As someone who didn't like Splatoon, where the goal was to, like, paint the most of the map. I don't think I would enjoy doing that as opposed to, like, actually, you know, killing the enemy team. Which I'm sure you benefit from, but... Let me, go, let me do a quick once-over of the levels, because I'm curious which one might have been the hardest. These, these are gonna suck, these last two. I'm dreading, I'm dreading those, because those are, those are a gauntlet. Uh, crash compactor, hit the road. The character, le the alternate character levels are usually not too bad. I do remember the jet board levels. I, I remember struggling on those. Those were, those were a pain because that's a lot of timing you have to do. Lining everything up so that you can zoom on through and not hitting any mines or anything.
Yeah, I don't remember which one specifically. It might have been. Bears repeating might have been the worst. These snow levels, they, they, they are all awful. Those, those are a huge pain to get, uh, to get platinum for. Dino Dash kind of sucked because it was so long, and uh, you can't get the crates with the dinosaur like you could in earlier Crash games. They advertise a new non-binary bat character. Is it controversial? I'm guessing it's controversial with some people more because it's non-binary, not because it's a new character. To, it does beg the question why they need to introduce a new character in a game like that, because, like, a game like Crash Rumble is your big chance to, like, do fan service and bring all of the characters from the Crash series in. Setting aside, you know, the non-binary thing, I don't think they needed to, like, spend a character slot on new the character. That's my take. I don't know why I did that. Okay, those are nothing. Gotta confirm. These devs are mean. I don't trust them. I have no faith in these devs. Hello. Spinal injury. It's kind of like how Crash Bash gave us Rilla Roo. Yeah. I think Rilla Roo was unnecessary. Especially since they, like, never used him again after that. It's rare that they add a new character in a game like that, and it just they, it wins everyone over. It's, it's some people's new favorite. And they continue to use the character after that point. It just, it just always, almost always feels like a waste of a character. Who plays as the dog in multiverses? Nobody. That's not what they play the game for. Who cares? No one wants to play as Gem Dog. Anyway, so the characters in Crash Rumble, what what do they do like differently from one another? What what sets them apart at the character select? Oh, there's different classes. Nope, I need that. Oh, I can bounce on those. I forgot. Oh boy, here we go. We got slow down, and we got two masks immediately. Oh, that's telling. I'm gonna need invincibility in this level. Uh-oh! What are, what are blocker characters? What do they do? Are they specialized in, like, killing opponents? I assume the primary goal is to collect fruit, but you... It, like, it's worth it to KO opponents to prevent them from... Like, similar to, to Splatoon. I wonder who else could have been in Rillaroo's place in Crash Bash. I, I do love about that game the fact that even though there's only a limited number of playable characters, they do manage to get, like, everyone in the series. We're pretty close in as, a, as at least, like, a level hazard. Almost everyone appears in that game. Except Pinstripe. Pinstripe was absent. Uh-oh. Given the Dingadals uh, Ding thing was being like, uh, kind of slowish, clumsy... 
He was, he was like the goofy heavy character, as opposed to uh, Tiny and Koala Kong, which were the more traditional big dudes in Crash Bash. But given the thing was like bouncing, I guess, I guess Ripper Roo was the obvious choice. Like, it'd be, it'd be totally... F it'd be fitting for Ripper Roo and Dingadal to both have that like bouncing thing going on. I guess both have fireballs, because I don't know. What else is Ripper Roo gonna shoot? Doesn't really matter. Yeah, I probably I probably just would have done like playable Ripper Roo. In fact, I probably would have had Ripper Roo be the one who joins the good guy's side. Maybe not. It's hard to say in retrospect. Because this game was like... This game was a redemption for Dingadile. Maybe not fully a redemption, but like... He's just kind of... He's kind of mora morality neutral in this game, as opposed to being a full-on villain. Which is an impressive change, considering that he was like a penguin-bullying psychopath in Crash 3. I think his ability will be nit nitro boxes. You're talking about Crash Rumble. It is a little surprising they didn't fit Pinstripe into a uh, Crash Bash in any way. I don't know what kind of level he might have been on. Maybe he could have been on one of the tank levels. They fit Komodo Mo and Komodo Joe on one, which was a little arbitrary. I don't know what Komodo dragons have to do with operating tanks. I don't like this trash bot. This trash bot. This trash bot worries me. I thought Rumble would be like Bash, wishful thinking. What, like it would have a single player? If so, then yes, that was wishful thinking. That's a game that I've uh, I've considered doing a stream of just to see how bad it was. Was the uh, Crash Boom Bang. The supposedly terrible Nintendo DS Crash Bash-like party game. I think there were three Crash Party games in the style of Bash. There, there was Crash Boom Bang, and then there was another one after that that was probably mobile. I think that was the mobile Crash era, where they had, like, two... two kart racing games on mobile. Oh! That's the inversion mask! I don't know. I thought it was, like, the... I thought it was Invader Zim. Whoops. Hey, when are we getting more, uh, when, when's Invader Zim coming to Paramount Plus? There's, like, been, uh, fan petitions to bring that back, weren't there? There was a little notice at the end of the Hey Arnold movie. Of, uh, like, thank you to all the fans who sent letters and petitions asking for more Hey Arnold, so... I guess that had must have had something to do with it being made. More like party games. I don't know if I'm liking this trend of more online-only games. Why is Diablo 4 online-only? There's no single-player alternative. I, I, I'm, I don't know anything about Diablo. So, has it always had co-op? And now they're, like, they're forcing co-op in Diablo 4? Is that what, you, that what it is? I thought it was like, uh, I think, like the gameplay is kind of similar, like, like Magicka, isn't it? It's like top-down, kind of isometric, swords and sorcery, optional co-op stuff. Did Diablo 1 even have multiplayer?
<laughs> Too late. Between this crash... I do feel like this crash game is just... Crash Rumble seems like it's kind of trying to... Kind of trying to capitalize on both Splatoon and Overwatch. Although it seems like kind of a half-assed attempt, because, you know, it's a crash game, not a new IP. There's also that new, uh, there's that new Sony game. That is, uh, just, like, Splatoon with foam. Why did I do that? I like- the inversion mask is my favorite mask. I like this one. This one is, like, intuitive and easy to use. I can usually process what's going on with the inversion mask pretty easily. Now, oh, come on. Okay, I'm invincible. That's good for this section. Invincibility is good. Oh boy. I remember this section! Hello! How are you today? Oh boy. Upside down wall running. Okay. That wasn't too bad. And invincible again. Ah, oh, I hate this mask. Alright. Oh, there's more? Oh no, I hate this! I remember this part. This part sucks. <laughs> I don't like this bad. I don't like this level. My favorite mask is the super spin. I don't mind it outside of time trials. It is probably my second favorite. I'm gonna say inversion, then super spin, then uh, slow down. I, no, no, I like the I like the slow down one a little bit better than super spin. Super spin makes you makes you move slow, which kind of kills platforming games for me. It's not fully a deal breaker, but it's definitely less satisfying to move a uh, like slow, forgiving platforming character. That's why I really disliked about uh, Mario Sunshine. It's kind of antithetical to Crash. Which is all about, like, very, very tight, precise movement. Oh, you know what? If they do another, if we are getting a Switch 2 anytime soonish, that that could mean another Mario game. They usually do one per. Well, there is Mario Super Mario Bros. Wonder coming out, but like the 3D series, they usually do one entry per console. Are we gonna get a Mario Odyssey 2? I'd love, I'd love that. I am so down for another Mario Odyssey. I also kind of figure they must be working on a sequel. Must. My prediction is that they're working on a sequel. 
because if they weren't, surely they would have had DLC for Mario Odyssey. It's like too much of a cash cow for them not to have done so. I, I remember everyone kind of being blown away that there wasn't DLC for Mario Maker 1. And then it turned, they revealed Mario Maker 2, so that was, everyone kind of figured that was why. Plat for this is 142. That's good to know. Uh, I'm probably not, I don't know if I'll be getting any Platinums on this stream. What I've been doing is be... This is already taking, like, long enough. We're on, like, stream 12 or 13 of this game. I'm settling for gold on stream. But, uh, I am getting... I'm, I'm finishing up all the platinums off stream. Because it's a very grindy process to get platinums. And, uh, when we do the final stream of this game... I will have to... I will have to do all those levels platinum... In order to get the, uh, in order to get the, the final ending. We are at least going to achieve 100% on stream. Like, that's definitely going to happen. I think ideally... I'd like to get all but, like, the last two levels done. Hopefully on this stream, and then the last stream we'll have just the last two. Ah, oh, no, I want to jump on that! Last stream will just be the last two levels getting Platinums. Which could be, like, two, three hours or more just by themselves. I think those will be, uh... <laughs> those streams are probably going to be similar to, like, Stormy Ascent. Nineteen ninety-five crash. This level's way too hard. It'll ruin the game for everybody. I know it's complete, but let's remove it. Twenty twenty crash. Nah, make it harder. Yeah, put three of them in the game. Put twelve gems on every version of this level. We're proud to announce the uh, next entry in the Crash Bandicoot series. Is a uh, CBT Crash Bandicoot Turbo. It is the hardest Crash game to date. It will explode your balls. Hope you all enjoy it. Okay, yeah, I'll just I'll just walk on the outside. That's fine. I can do that. Saw someone on YouTube say, this whole game makes Stormy Ascent looks like a cakewalk. It really is. By comparison. Uh, well, I think it was Nick in his, uh... Nick Wickersham in his, uh, his Crash 3 stream? That was the most recent Crash game he streamed. And because he didn't have access to Stormy Ascent when he streamed Crash 1, I convinced him to go back and do that. I think probably added like two hours to his stream and he was just trying to beat the level. He wasn't even going for relics or anything. Gems. Nope, just get to the end. This game is still more forgiving than F-Zero. That might be hard to believe. F-Zero GX is what separates the boys from the men. That game is nutty nutso. I guess it's no wonder they never made an F -Zero, another F-Zero game. No, one finished, no one's finished the last one. Everyone's still working on it. There must be a way to, like, speed this up. Because this section just... This section sucks. I assume that I can't, like, run on the... 
I might be able to make the jump between those without doing the wall running. If I do my jumps just right. don't know how much I want to risk it, but I, I, it looks possible. I especially don't think I want to risk it for these sections. No! <sighs> I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to just not do the wall ride sections. I think I can make that jump. How niche do you guys feel that the Crash Bandicoot series is? Uh, it was, it was like the PlayStation series in its heyday. Everyone had a PlayStation had Crash Bandicoot. But that was when men were men. We had real gamers back then. I don't know if I'm going to say that, but, uh... I just, I I don't know many modern, like, YouTubers or anything who play these games. Usually because everyone just thinks they're too hard. Which, yeah, you definitely, you have an argument for sure with this one, but the other ones? People just don't have an interest in, you know, somewhat difficult platforming games. I bet a new, uh, a new Super Meat Boy would fail for the same reason. Hate to say. What about Celeste? I jumped. I, that was an accidental double jump. Accidental. Spilled my bottle of water. That was terrible. Uh, I spotted someone in the Hey Arnold movie. The dude who played the uh, Czechoslovakian guy, Oscar, has apparently died since the original series. And I don't know what the case is with uh, the voice actor for Mr. Wynn. Maybe he just he didn't want to return to the role. Admittedly, it, it, Mr. Wynn has always kind of been a haha -ha, laugh at the Asian man role. So may maybe he didn't want to come back to that. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to make any assumptions, but... Uh, both characters, for their brief appearances in the movie, are now voiced by uh, Wally Wingert. So uh, Renji is now doing the, the characters with the silly accents in Hey Arnold. What was it Wally Wingert voice? He was, the, he was the Riddler in the Arkham games. I don't know a lot of other Wally Wingert roles. I think he might have been in, like, Persona or Danganronpa or something. I'll bet he does video game roles. <laughs> so it sits in the weird middle ground of not being as popular as Sonic or Mario, but not more popular than Ratchet Clank or Jack and Daxter. I guess maybe the... PS2 era just kind of killed off Crash and Spyro. Which is baffling to me because putting out a, spring, a string of bad games didn't do shit to Sonic. It's kind of baffling how bulletproof the Sonic series seems to be. 
I guess just because it's so it's so multimedia compared to something like this. There's Sonic everything. Like there's video games, there's cartoon shows, there's merchandise. Crash doesn't have that. Crash just needed a Saturday morning cartoon. That that would have saved the franchise. That's all they needed. There's no Crash Bandicoot backpacks. You're right, though. I don't really know any, like, streamers or content creators who play Ratchet or Jack games. No, uh, Ray Narvae is... I watch him, Ray Narvae is Jr., and, uh, he streamed the Sly Trilogy recently. I don't know if he's ever streamed any Ratchet and Clanks. Hello, what was that? It was a Windows notification? Oh, you guys didn't hear it, because I have desktop audio off. They tried to make Crash Multimedia. How, how do you mean? When did they try to make Crash Multimedia? They made him multi-console, partway through the PS2 era. Are you talking about, like, the Crash Bandicoot cartoon pilot? Because I know that existed. Or there was, like, at least an intro sequence, not, not a full pilot episode. Fucking Bubsy got a full cartoon pilot, and Crash didn't. There was a mini-TV series in 2007. I wasn't aware of that. What was going on in 2007? That was after, uh... That was after Twin Sanity, but before... Crash of the Titans? Right? Which came first? I'd stream both of them, and I still don't remember which came first between Titans or Mind Over Mutant. They really... I mean, you can watch my... You can watch my streams of those games for my full commentary. I really did not like how they handled the characters in those games. They tried to go, like, full cartoon ham. With, like, every character. What, what was the... What was Crunch's persona in those games? Was he still Mr. T? Oh, so close. I still think I can make that. If I do, like, the spins just right. That would save me a lot of time, because the running on the walls is very slow. I like the little theme song remixes in some of the in some of the tracks in this game. Like I heard the Crash 2 theme for a moment and it got my hopes up, and then it just like stopped after four notes, and then I was sad again. There it was! He was still doing Mr. T. Okay, so Crunch was Mr. T. Coco was, like... Coco was just kind of random. Like, they sort of did a nutty professor thing with her, but also... Was she, like, obsessed with butter? Or some weird, totally random quirk that she had? I appreciate the attempt to make... To, like, have a goofy girl character, but she wasn't really goofy. It, it felt like they made her stupid. Which, which is not Coco at all. Never took off multimedia-wise. Well, it was kind of too late in 2007. They needed to attempt to, like, go multimedia when Crash 1 came out, is what they needed to do. You don't wait until your franchise is already dying to make that effort. It's 
kind of a shame because Sony definitely had the. I think I would imagine they had the money to like invest more in having some sort of mascot character. I don't know though. I don't know the full details of that like that company in that era. Their MO just seemed to be, like, put as much shit on the PlayStation as they could. Which was a good business model. It worked out. I don't know if I'm, like, quite... I think it's possible. I don't think... I don't know if it's going to be consistent enough to be worth going for. No! Ah! Oh! Okay, I made it. I'm fine. I thought I was expecting to bounce on the TNT, and then it, she landed on them. No! Ah! Depth. What is depth perception? They used to have loads of crash figures. Remember having the crash scuba figure? Huh. Now, were those real or were those just, like, bootleg plush dolls, though? Because, like, every popular character has bootleg plush dolls. They sell at, like, fairs and things. In fact, if I remember correctly, wasn't Fate Crash the result of just one such bootleg plush doll? I'm glad this game does Crash's personality mostly justice. He's a good silent protagonist, Crash. He's a goofball, but he's not, like, unlikable or just completely moronic. I mentioned this during my, uh, my stream of it. I think he was portrayed as, like, the most heroic, the most, like, lovable dude in uh, Crash Nitro Kart. Almost went through the cracks. No, I need that. <sighs> A little bit of time wasted. Can I make it? I can. A little more time wasted. Alright, invincibility. The less time I spend in this form, the better. Because spinny movement is slow. It's weird. When you're spinning like that, that's your fastest mode. But when you're when you're in purple spin, you just it slows you down so much. That's TNT! I didn't want to break that. Okay. We got this nightmare section. Ah! Ah, the box! Fuck me! No, it, I'm good. I'm fine. Oh, that was scary. I hated that.
15 more seconds. 16 more seconds for platinum. Oh, I didn't like that. That level's gonna be rough. I don't think I've ever owned a character plush. I haven't owned a lot of merchandise in general. I, I didn't have a lot of a, a lot of money to spend growing up, and what I did have, I spent on like video games. All right, what is this level? Rush hour, so there's gonna be a lot of cars. Is that Tana? Is that Dingadile? Is that both? This is—is is this the everyone level? We're going to play as everyone in a row, aren't we? I hope the PC version performs better, the, the Steam one. It's, it's, it's fine, the Switch version of this. I, d I do notice the frame drops here and there. Alright, here we go. Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. What is this? Okay. Well, alright, gotta make sure. Nothing. I'm wondering, can I suck this guy, grab the clock, and then have the TNT ready? I'm gonna guess no. Also, I don't know if that'll help me because the TNT, uh... The TNT just hits the drone. No, that does not work. It just... What are you doing? Are you sad? Or you can't pick it up again? Oh. Let me see if I can help. Huh. Well, it's really stuck at that angle. Like, it has geometry. I'm walking up it like a ramp. All right. Alright. Is there a way I can get past this guy without sucking him? I really don't want to have to resort to that. I don't think I can. Not in a way that would, like, save me time, at least. I'm gonna have to. Alright. I, I wish it just, if I, like, took his TNT, he would just go away. I'm afraid I'm going to launch the TNT and it's going to, uh... Why, why no suck? The suck isn't working. Yeah, see, it hits him. I don't want it to hit him. I want it to hit the pile. Rush hour is notorious for being a very hard time trial. That's, that's good to hear. Great. Lovely. Okay. That worked somehow. I don't know what just happened. I just kind of, like, bumped butts with those drones. No, hit the pile! Don't hit the drone! The drone is no longer a threat! Oh, uh, those guys are going to make getting these harder. Okay. This already seems, like, annoying. Maybe not hard, but annoying. I'm sure it'll get hard later. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these guys. I'm going to turn around, because I do need those nitro ones. It is technically possible for me to just get one of the... That one... I got all but one of the crates without dying. Unfortunately, I cannot... If I... I can blow up a time crate to get the time difference... But if I blow up in uh, Aku Aku Crate, I do not get the mask. 
Sadly, it does not work like that. Man. I try to avoid sucking as much as possible in life. And also in this level. And dingo dial levels in general. That's more than one second that I'm going back for that. So is it worth going back for that is the question I have to ask myself. It might not be. How many are there here? Is it just the two? I can technically get those without the TNT. Which means for the optimal time, I will have to get those without the TNT. Oh, no. Well, that's going to make this annoying. I have to perfectly spin those nitros. There was a similar situation in the last Dingadile level. The, uh... Rock blocked. There were some TNT crates next to a mask that if you spun just perfectly, you could get. But boy, was it annoyingly difficult to do that. Usually just blew yourself up every time. I always think I get these... I When I get a Platinum, I think I've optimized a level so much and then the, the toys for Bob time is like 20 seconds less. Maybe I can get by him. I'm, I'm a, maybe I'll be optimistic. Maybe I can fake him out. I'll go to the right and then swing to the... No. No, that's not happening. Why no suck? Sometimes the robot blows up, and sometimes he just floats there looking sad. Maybe I have a little more leeway with the nitros, because the nitros bounce, whereas the TNT crates don't. No, not... Okay, so jumping on that's probably going to be the fastest. Not sucking. Go away. I don't know for sure which of these have... Okay, that one has more time crates in them. Got good bus RNG. Oh, there was another one in that pile. Nope. I'm too fast for you. Not for that one. No, bounce on it. No, bounce on the TNT. It's so precise to bounce on a small box as giant dinga dial. I can spin those. Thank you. That had nothing in it. Hello. Oh, that's a uh, okay. That wasn't too bad. I'm behind the sapphire. Oh, that's not good. Where am I going? Those <sighs> buses. Okay. Memorization. What's the in-universe explanation for why these characters feel the need for speed? At this point in the story, aren't they all just, like, here for snacks? 
What's the rush? boxes. I didn't need those anyway. Wasn't worth it. Okay, so I want to bounce on Aku and I want to bounce on that TNT. Bounce on that. Fire boxes. Or if the commentary has died a little bit. I'm now very attentive to this level. Alright, this is where the buses are. And I missed him again, didn't no I didn't. Okay, I'm fine. I'm good. Just just I just jumped off. I could spin I don't necessarily have to suck or uh, jump on those. I I can spin them. That might be assuming that the buses are in a favorable position. I'm glad those nitros are at least early, and they're not asking me to do something like that at the very tent tail end of the Dingadale Dingadile section. Dingadale, owner of the Dingadale Dingadome. Fairly Odd Parents has gotten like a, a million bad sequels and spin offs. First and foremost, the live action Drake Bell one. Wasn't there one recently? There was like a recent uh, Fairly Odd Parents production. Jump on the box, please. Okay, cool nitros. There's a there's a new live action series on Paramount Plus. I'm sorry, they're trying live action Fairly Odd Parents again. Why? Now everything's got to be live action. I know why. Why do I even ask? I wonder if I could go over the top of those. Probably not. ahead and set those off. Yeah, good jump. Good jumping. Ding it out. Expert platformer. You wouldn't know by looking at him. Oh now I gotta I gotta blow stuff up, don't I? don't know if I needed to do that. It's 
probably gonna be a point that I want to use this uh, this mask to save a little time. It is kind of fun just like bouncing from crate to crate as Dingadial. You do that a lot in his levels. Oh boy, here we go. I gotta memorize more stuff now. What? I, I kicked it! Cursed front facing Crocker. I don't think I have. You know what? I'm just I'm just gonna go. For a love this is the first level I'm doing this for. I don't wanna like make sure I get a perfect Dinga Dial run every single time just to have another failed Tauna attempt. I'm gonna learn this level in pieces. I'm just gonna I'm gonna get to the end of Dingadile so that I can have another fair shot at Tauna. And then I guess after Tauna there's probably a Cortex section. Watch me get, like, no crates and still get the sapphire time. Tana is the last segment. Okay, so it's just Dingadile and Tana. Even well, that that's good news. Even so, I want to learn the Tana section at least a little bit before I stress too much on getting the perfect Dingadile run. What happens to those cars that just fall out of the sky? Are they okay? Don't want to be causing no accidents. Tana. Here we go, slow and steady. I'm just here to learn. I can, I can, I can whip these guys, yeah, and then attack them. I just gotta, like, not suck at it like I did the first time. I can either whip that or jump on it. And then... Tana has rails. I forgot about that. Alright, can, I can just whip those guys. If they're not attacking, hello. Will these electrocute me? No? They're good? Alright, jump on those. You said the time was like 3.30? How much can be left? Ah. Alright. Well, I remember how Tana works now, so I'll, that, that, that's fine. I'll just go for it. I got the gist of it. The Dingadile section definitely seems less forgiving of the two. I feel like Dingadile's levels are the most similar to Crash 1 time trials. You just have to platform very precisely. That's about all there is to it. There's some sucking. There's a little suckage. Not too much. I 
out like this firebox. If it's just, you know what? I can just spin the, I can spin that number crate because I don't need to. Dingadile's walk cycle makes him look like he should be moving slower than he does. Okay, I guess that works. You need to hit the Nitro or the TNTs. We're gonna do it. We're making it. I missed the... Ah, fine. It's okay. Nothing but good vibes. This isn't that hard. This is fine. We got... This is the run. This is the time. Look how far ahead of the ghost we are. We're whole, like, feet in front of the Sapphire Ghost. Got both of those, that's good. Alright, one extra bounce. That's alright. That, do that doesn't kill it. That wasn't great. It's alright, just a one second! It's alright. It's an interesting place for the, uh... We're getting a lot of, like, glitch TNT crates in this level. I wonder how big uh, a new Spyro game would be. Not like in terms of sales, I mean like like physically. Because making a Spyro level is pretty different from making a Crash level. It's also, I guess, like not as much of a of like a, a complex science. Oh, I don't know about that. Spyro is just a pure collectathon. You don't have to make, like, uh, unique and varied platforming challenges for Spyro in the same way you do for Crash. You kind of just have to... I, I guess most of it would be figuring out minigames, because that's what Spyro did after Spyro 1. Was the eggs and orbs where a lot of them were behind minigames. I guess in that, in that way, it's, it's pretty similar to like something like Banjo. How much are they char Since you mentioned Gollum, how much are they charging for Lord of, Lord of the Rings Gollum? Is that a full price game? It is, isn't it? <laughs> they want like 60 or 70 bucks for that shit. What's the latest on the train wreck that is Gollum game? Almost missed again. I didn't. I'm good. I'm fine. Gotta get that mask, fella.
Where's my ride? There it is. Okay. We're fine. We're good. This part is a little stressful, but it's not it's not as dangerous as it seems because there's more there's more ground than not. Okay, I got it that time. No, get the Thank you, Tana. Are those are those random, I wonder? Or are those set to spawn at specific times? No, Tana. Work with me, please. No, okay. Missed another one. I don't have a good... This is another one of those levels that I can't see everything. That's the problem. Oh, there's another bot here. Hello, bot. Not Why do you know jump? Jump. That was weird. Man. Studio making it says they want to exploit the license as much as they can and they want to make a sequel. Is that their words? Surely they did not say outright, we want to exploit the license. Any desire to make a sequel to that game definitely takes balls. I'll grant them that. Ah, fuck it. I missed two. That is indeed what they said verbatim. That sounds like a studio that has a, a, a deep respect for the Lord of the Rings. Granted, I don't know how much respect the Lord of the Rings is worth these days. I, I don't really keep up with it. Any, anything wacky going on with, like, the Tolkien estate and Warner? Who did they say that to, out of curiosity? That that sounds like a statement that could conceivably be made to, like, shareholders. Probably not a statement they made to fans, right? Like, in a shareholders meeting, that's essentially saying, we want to milk as much cash out of these stupid Lord of the Rings fans as we can. And then all the shareholders clap. I guess I could eat a hit there if I use a mask. I don't really want to. I'd like to save my hits, but optimally speaking, you do want for the like sections like these, you want to find spots that it is expedient to just take a hit using a mask. Anyone talk about Sonic Frontiers? Is there like a consensus on it yet? The only person I've heard talking about it is Saucy because he's, you know, Sonic super fan. The fact that people aren't talking it probably means that it's not 
like amazingly good or amazingly bad, right? Due to insanity too. We need an open world crash game. Open world is in. Can you imagine something along with like the presentation along the lines of like uh, of Zelda Breath of the Wild or Sonic Frontiers, but just crashes there? That would be incredibly stupid, and I would call it stupid, but it would also sell, because people love dumb shit like that. Just picturing the contrast is amazing. Spyro could definitely do that. Spyro has always been like a... Like a, a vast fantasy setting. They could, they could do open world Spyro. Spyro of the wild. Let's do it. You find a way to, like, division off the map loosely just so we can have, like, sections of gem collecting or something. We can totally do that. What was that? What did I hit? There's a barrier? Everything I'm hearing about Frontiers is that it's a good 3D Sonic game. Have people made any comparisons? Like, the good 3D Sonic games, quote-unquote, are like Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, uh, Sonic Colors people liked, Sonic Generations... I guess I could use that mask to get that that uh, that pile that the mask is in. There was nothing there, nothing where. Huh? I mean, maybe it's just uh, maybe it was just the border of the level. I don't know. I wouldn't think the level would have like. El invisible electric barriers. But what do I know? This is the future. <sighs> that wasn't worth going back for. Because you can see the wall, kind of. Like, you can see, like, a hologram, so that must be it. The more time I spend in the air, the better. Because walking on the... Walking against the, the traffic is slower. Ah! Missed the craze. People's opinions on the good 3D Sonic games keep flip-flopping. Recently, people are saying Sonic Colors is a bad game, and same for Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Now, are the people who are saying Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 are bad games... Do they like other 3D Sonic games? Like, what's the what's the comparison they're making, I wonder? I'm, I'm 
I'm pretty cynical with the series. I would, I would even argue Sonic has never had a good 3D Sonic game. It's just Sonic Adventure 2 was the closest. That game had problems, but it, it showed the formula, and if they just, like, fixed up some things, it had the potential. And the Sonic series has just kind of been trying and failing to reach that potential its whole life. That's my opinion on the Sonic series. Full of potential. I always thought what would be a, a great mechanic for a Sonic game that they've never done was, like, uh, Super Hot. Some kind of mechanic where, uh, like, time only moves when you do, or even just the ability to slow down time, like the mask in this game. It, it seems just like a no-brainer for Sonic, but uh, I don't think they've ever done anything like that in a Sonic game. I need that. There we go. This feels like a good run so far. I'm gonna jinx it by saying that. <sighs> I knew it. It's usually worth it to go out and jump on crates as Dingadile, because that's his fastest method of, uh, of breaking them. Well, not, not, not even that. It's just, it's usually, it's usually a good platforming option in Dingadile levels. I remember the, uh, I don't think it was, I don't think it was rock blocked. I think it was the Dingadile level before that one. Maybe it was rock blocked. Had the. No, it was before that one. It was in the swamp. There was the one where you had the uh, boat you had to tag along with. You could get around that whole, like, boat follow section just by. Uh... You could barely make it bouncing to the, the crates on, like, the far left and far right of the area. And that was way faster than waiting for the boat to get to you. All right, down to no masks. Here we go. That's all right. Masks were meant meant to be spent. Anyone seen any uh, interesting AI videos recently? I haven't found any more, like, really good AI covers. It's just kind of been a sea of the bad ones. Ah, oh, I thought I could make that. I, w I wonder if there's Crash Bandicoot AI covers. I'll bet there are. Just using his voice lines from in-game. You know what? Uh... I wonder... I don't think this is going to work, but I'm going to try. What if I lure this guy, destroy him, and then get the clock? It doesn't respawn him. That, that might be faster. I don't like that it adds the step of me having to destroy him at the start of every run, but it might be faster. Are there any Ganondorf AI covers? He is voiced by the same guy every game, even if it's just, uh... 
even if it's just sound effects of him going Hurr! shit like that. I can't picture Ganondorf speaking. Which is the same for Crash, actually. Which is exactly why an AI, AI cover might be fascinating. I say that, someone did a Minecraft Villager AI cover that did, did, did sound like the Villagers at all, so that didn't work. A for effort. I'm more or less doing consistently enough by now that I'm, I'm willing to do this at the start of every run. Okay, if I miss if I miss the jump though, it's not faster. I was joking around on uh, various discords earlier. As far as I know, it's still just a rumor. I don't think it's confirmed that Illumination is doing a Zelda movie. What are some crack casting for the Illumination Zelda movie? I said like uh, Ryan Reynolds' is Link. Amy Schumer as Zelda, and Vin Diesel as Ganondorf. I'm shit posting, but at the same time, I can hear it. God damn it! I don't like that I can hear it. Also, obviously, The Rock will be Darunia. Darunia will be in the movie just so The Rock can play a Rock character. That's it. That's the only reason he'll be written into the movie. Everyone seems to be casting Tom Holland and everything. Who is Tom Holland? What was he, what was he in? I don't. I don't watch. I don't watch modern movies, so I, I don't know any of the any of these actors. People are uh, people are following these days. The Mario movie was weird because it, except for Chris Pratt and I guess Anya Taylor Joy, it wasn't a lot of new actors. It was a lot of like old internet meme -y actors. That's that's why the response was so great to the cast. No, I said great. When I said great, I mean like mimetic. It's us old fogies who all know Jack Black and Charlie Day. Spider-Man. Okay. Oh, the... Wait, which Spider-Man? Are we on a- are we on a third Spider-Man? I know McGuire- Tobey Maguire. Uh... Tom Holland is not Miles Morales, I assume. Right? Or is he? Oh, Spider-Man's in Avengers now. So is that a different Spider-Man from the Spider-Man movies? Why did I just... Why did I spin that? Okay, I need to pay attention. Give me, give me a rundown on what Spidey's been up to in the past ten years. I've only watched the, the, the Tobey Maguire movies. That That is the extent of my Spider-Man experience. Alright, I got two safety masks. I just used one of them! <sighs> Feels safe. Immediately fucks up. Moral of the story. Never count yourself as SAFE! is annoying. Come on. All right, one of the crates. That's all right, I'll accept one.
Tom Holland can be me, though. There you go. I don't even have a prediction for what a Zelda, Legend of Zelda movie would be like. Like, obviously, it's it would include, you know, the main trio, Link, Zelda, Ganondorf, but beyond that, would they adapt a specific game? They, they'd probably just do their own thing completely. Impa would prob probably be in it because she's a widely recurring character. Would Tingle be in it? Can we get Danny DeVito Tingle? Okay, maybe, maybe Dan Danny DeVito might not be the best choice. What about the... What about the dude with dwarfism from uh, Game of Thrones? I don't know Game of Thrones well enough to know his, his uh, the actor's name or the character he plays. But he looks vaguely tingular. Y you could tingle him up. We got Tatana again. This is the time. This is the run. No, jump, Tana, jump! Grapple! God damn it. I say that and then she's like determined to ruin it. while since I speed buggied. I got three panic modes. I got Gollum, I got speed buggy, and I got Mickey Mouse. It's all one of those three. It just depends on the game. I don't know which I'll get until I play the game. Now we're at 320. How many levels do I want to do? Maybe I could at least do the whole snacks dimension. I'll have to, I'll have to see how many how many levels are left after this. I have to turn off my AC when I'm streaming, and it is uh, currently late June. I don't, I don't know how bad the heat is relatively. I, I've heard about uh, El Nino on its way again. No, nope, I need you. Come back. A little bit time wasted. What? I hit the wall again. That must have been what I hit. That seems like a mean decision. To just have a, like, a, a, a electric kill you wall there.
All right, ding it all done. 134. I haven't been paying attention to what my previous dingadile times have been. All right, I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna grapple. I'm gonna miss the second grapple. No! Okay, one down. Got this. This is the run. I got that one this time. Just gotta jump some tram cars. Easy peasy. No, jump on the- why does she struggle with this one? We're good. We're on track. Missed one. It's not the end of the world. Missed two. I have yet to make it past that track. I don't like that. I feel so close. I can't wait to get to the end of it and find out there's a whole nother, like, platforming section and then an even harder track afterwards. down. That's okay. No, I need that. <sighs> Multiverse has never added Gandalf, did they? He was found in the files, if I remember correctly. But he never made it into the game but during the uh, during the beta. Oh, jump, jump, dig a dial. Let's see if I can avoid hitting the uh, wall of death today. All right. Did it. No, hit the jump on the th Thank you. This feels like maybe the most Twin Sanity-like song in the soundtrack that I can recall. This particular track is a very cartoony and whimsical one.
All right, a little worse that time, 137. She's so inaccurate with that. I don't know why I even keep trying to grapple those. I haven't hit them yet. Oh, the box falls with it! Man! I don't know why I didn't expect that. I thought it would still be floating there. I can't wait for a uh, Velma version Fred to be added to multiverses. Didn't they like sabotage him in that game? Or that, in that game, in that series? I heard that was a complaint people had with it. I wonder if there will ever be a Ronma one half reboot anime. There are a lot of reboots in general these days. There were rumors. I want to emphasize rumors of a Dragon Ball reboot. Which, if they really abridged it, I guess doesn't seem fully out of the realm of possibility. I wouldn't be opposed to uh, the original Dragon Ball getting a getting a glow up. so easy to hit. I get that you're not supposed to be jumping out to the crates like I am. They expect you to, like, suck them in normal play, but come on. But it have to be so close. I wonder if that's worth going for, that uh, mask out there. I don't strictly need masks. So if there's not a place for me to, like, eat one to save time, then they are, again, optimally speaking, just kind of taking up my time to get them. Why did I do that? Well, you know what? Get out of here, sad drone, and I will continue without you. Dragon Ball Z got Kai, which cut out all the filler episodes, but I don't think it did a lot to the pacing of the show. Also, that show, that was such a disappointment for me because when they were promoting Dragon Ball Z Kai, or Dragon Ball Kai, they were advertising that they were, they were gonna 
redraw every frame of the original anime. They were totally doing everything from scratch to update it. And then when it came out, it looked exactly like the original show shot for shot. So, like, maybe they redrew it, but... If it looks exactly the same, it's not shaded differently, there's nothing different about it, then what was the point? That's just kind of wasted time. Especially, it happened after GT, too. There was so much potential for it to be such a nicer looking show, but they just, they didn't do that. It was a glorified remaster. Why did I, I almost, I tried to suck the nitro. Don't suck nitro. Have you watched uh, Dragon Ball Darien? Or is that another one of those series that you just kind of know of by osmosis? And if so, which version did you watch? They redrew some specific scenes? Huh. I never watched Kai beginning to end, so... I guess I wouldn't have seen every single scene. Watch pretty much all of Kai. I don't think the original Dragon Ball suffered from filler very much. Certainly not to the same degree as Z. It probably had filler episodes here and there, but I... Like, I can't... There weren't any filler arcs in Dragon Ball. Then again, Dragon Ball was more suited to just... being episodic than Z generally was. Watched Kai as it was airing in the 2000s. Uh, what... what, uh, what channel? Or were you, like, finding episodes with other means? Because that was on, uh... It was on Disney XD, wasn't it? Or was it on Nicktoons? Dragon Ball Z Kai was on some weird channels. I remember a couple of anime that I would not expect to be on those channels being on those channels. Doraemon being one of them. Doraemon was, I believe, Dis that was Disney XD. Tried Doraemon for two seasons. And it's not even, the f like, the first two seasons of the more recent Doraemon series. They just started where the Japanese was at the time. And they just, they just started dubbing from that. I just wasn't paying attention that time. So there's like three seasons of Doraemon that are j Japanese only, and then you have two seasons of a very changed English dub, and then it goes back to being Japanese only. That is still extremely str- I'd, I'd never had, like, the extra channels growing up. I didn't have Nicktoons or Disney XD. But the thought of Dragon Ball being on any Nickelodeon channel... It's just kind of mind-blowing to me. Back in my day, there was only one channel that really showed anime, and it was Toonami. The Cartoon Network, the, the Toonami block on Cartoon Network. Not counting, like, 
Saturday morning cartoon, like, toyetic stuff, which was on, I think, like, Fox Kids. But that was only a block of the channel, like, part of the day, so, like, I, I couldn't tune into the, the Fox TV station anytime, or whatever the, the CW, whatever was it was that showed the Fox block. I couldn't tune into them at any time of the day and, like, get kids programming. They just had their morning block of, like, all the four kids properties. With all the weird bumps where Goku would talk to the nin- uh, not Goku, but... All the weird bumps where, like, Yugi would talk to the Ninja Turtles. And Ash Ketchum would meet Jackie Chan. That was a strange time. You know what? The, I, I liked it in its own way. Even if they weren't as, like... Even if they were obviously very, very corny and shitty. Compared to the Cartoon Network bumps. The Cartoon Network bumps were great. I miss the Cartoon Network where, like, all the cartoons lived in a city together. No one has any fun anymore. Big waste of time! Man. Probably wasn't worth it. Uh, it's not a terrific run so far, but maybe we'll still do it. I'll be happy to get to the end of the level. When you say redrawn scene, like, how redrawn was it? Was it still more or less in the same style as the originals, or... Was it really obviously different? Like, for example, but Dragon Ball GT was a lot more shaded. You could, t you could tell it was more detailed than than Dragon Ball Z was, just, like, looking at it. That's kind of what I was expecting the whole show to look like, Dragon Ball Kai. I, I expected it all to look like GT-quality animation. Or, dare I dream, video game intro-quality animation. Because those always look great. The Dragon Ball video games had... The kinds of anima animated intros that I always wanted the show to look like. And it just never did. E even in modern times, Super does not look... Dragon Ball Super does not look as good as those video game intros. It's not even close. Uh, we watched, Jack and I watched Dragon Ball Super Hero. I commented on it a little bit on the, uh, on the Discord. The animation, which is 3D, it's a CG movie. The animation looked pretty bad during the, like, just the, the characters sitting around and talking scenes. Mostly because I don't think they had a full 60 frame rate. I don't know what frame rate they had. Maybe it was the, the cinematic. 24 frames! But, uh... It looked like... It looked like a video game dropping frames. They cared about the action scenes. The action scenes looked great. Even in that style, even. Also, the, like, the plot of the movie was very creative in the, in, in the intro parts. It's a Piccolo movie. I appreciate that it's a Piccolo movie. I, I appreciate when shows, like, let characters that don't get to shine, shine. I don't like everything about the movie. There was, there was some dumb writing decisions, especially towards the end. Some, uh, we need to t we need to sell toys decisions. But I just, it, it was less egregious than I expected it to be. It was an okay movie. It's 
still in the same style, just the lines and colors are more blatantly modernized. So it looks more like, uh, it looks more digital than the original shots. Dragon Ball Z was still in the, uh, the, I believe the cell shading era. Even at the end. I think Dragon Ball GT was, was digitally animated, I think. I'm not positive. Oh, hello. Somehow I avoided the, the, the wall. Get that, get the thing to TNT. Thanks. I always forget the name of the director. There's a, uh, there's a director whose visual style I love. He did the, uh, he did the first Digimon movie, the th like the 30 minute one. And he guest directed one episode of the Digimon Adventure anime. And you can immediately tell it looks like very different from the rest of the show, which is digitally animated because it's, uh, it's traditionally animated in like incredible detail. It looks like, uh, it's like jumping from Pokemon to Akira in animation style. And it's really jarring, which works for great narrative effect in that particular instance, because it, it, the episode is like going from the digital world to the physical world. They don't do, they don't do that again. They don't do it every time they go to the physical world, but it was just a really cool episode for that reason. And I need to look into that dude's other movies, because I know he does other stuff. Sorry if I'm podcasting. Again, this is kind of repetitive. I don't have a lot to, like, say. I'm just, I'm just repeating the motions until I get back to the place where I died. You weren't wrong. This level is uh, this level is eating up a lot of time. Person who said this was considered a hard level. Bad bus RNG. I don't think I would be down for a Jack and Daxter return. I like the games. But they're also very narrative-driven games, and I feel like their story has been sufficiently wrapped up and it would kind of devalue 
the story's accomplishments to, like, keep it going. It's a series with, like, sufficient closure. I don't, I don't want to, like, undo that. I don't even know what, uh... I don't even know what Jack and Daxter 4 was like. The, the, the Dark Frontier? Lost Frontier? Or something? I don't know where they had to go with the story from there. Because the original trilogy, like, was really wrapped it up. There's Jack X, but... Jack X is just like a weird action movie plot. at four hours. Man, I wanted to get more levels done than this. But it's, it's really warm. I might even say I'm getting a little bit delirious, so... This might be, this might, this probably, probably be the last level. When I finally get to the end of this, uh, we'll see. I really do want to get to the end of this game. I, we've been at this for so long. I feel like it's time, but uh, I do have more time to stream now, so... Uh, if it needs to be done, I could do two more streams of this. gotten so close. I, I think the furthest we've gotten was like that Tauna rail section. And it's got some like some dick dastardly uh, box placements. Like it's set up so that you'll be stuck in the grappling animation at the same time as you need to jump over a thing. They knew exactly what they were doing. That's might be our best time yet, 133 for the Dingadial part. Don't die now, Tana. <sighs> so inaccurate. I don't know why I keep struggling with that specific box. I have, like, the little circle below me and everything. I know where I'm gonna land. Are there any other notoriously difficult levels that I should know about? Like, after this one? I'm assuming the crate escape will be bad. Maybe... maybe Maybe I don't need to be assuming that. Maybe it'll be less bad than I'm thinking. Maybe it won't be the entire next stream. I think it's the level after this one. Then we have the Cortex levels, which... I mean, the, the, the Cortex Castle levels, rather. Which I don't remember other than the last one. I 
I remember the last level and the Cortex variation of the last level being just gauntlets, but I don't remember the other two levels in the area. I'm gonna hit the underside of a car if I'm not careful. Thought I threaded the needle. I didn't. We're good. We're fine. Get another mask. Okay. 133. It's good time again. Despite my delirium, I am getting better just by sheer determination of doing the level over and over and over again. Okay, great. There we go. I would like to save time by, like, jumping off of those. I don't know if I can jump quite far enough to do that, though. Alright. That was not the last rail section. We got one more. Here's the stubborn robot. One cycled him. Get the box, please. Okay, here we go. I wonder if there's variation between the trams on this one. No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like they're just very intentionally timed in a difficult manner. I did it again, but I had a crate that time! I don't know if I even needed to jump for that. We got it. We're gonna do it. This is the run. It won't be that bad. People are exaggerating. This level just seems all right. Oh, there's only Dingadial and Tana. I thought there'd be a Cortex session section. This will be easy without a Cortex section. We'll just get through this and do five more levels afterwards. Did Kadikarus mention how long it took him to 100% this game? Did he, did he like, measure a time, or his, like, play hours? Why did, why did I spin that? I didn't need to spin that. Very inconsistent with those nitros. The crates under nitros are kind of mean. I get that you're supposed to, like, throw stuff into them, but come on. You're not going to do that in time trials. Took him 68 hours. I would wager I'm probably already way over 68 hours. I thought I had a crash pedigree. I thought I was good at these games. Man, I'm going to hit, like, 200. I don't know that for sure. I could, I could like, uh... 
I'd go to my menu and check how many hours I have in this game. Not right now, because I'm on a GameCube controller, but... Remind me to do that next stream, maybe. every crash game. Yeah. I didn't do the I didn't do the PS2 or handheld ones. Did uh did the outlier PS2 games. Actually, I did, did did even Twin Sanity have time trials? I don't remember. I don't remember did all three of them? Twin Sanity, Crash of the Titans, Mind Over Mutant. Did those all have time trials in them? Insanity didn't have relics. Okay. That was their attempt to, uh... That was their attempt to mix up the Crash formula, was Twin Sanity. And it might have worked better had they not, you know, rushed the game out. <sighs> Fuck it. Nor did Crash Tag Team Racing. That's less surprising to me. That Crash Tag Team Racing would not have, like, uh, competitive elements. Or competitive. I don't know how competitive time trial relics are necessarily, but... So I don't actually need to hit the TNT on the right side. I just need to hit the, uh... I just need the one time block on top is all. Alright. Total waste of a mask. There was no need for that. So, alright, that's what they're for. Masks are meant to be spent. Maybe I can spare myself one by not hitting these nitros. Yeah, there we go. Think for a racing game, time trials would be given. Yeah. I'm not too surprised with uh, tag team racing because it is by design such a. It is. It's. It feels like a game that's not designed to be taken seriously. It is. It's like the most pos it's the most party racing game in existence even more so than Mario Kart How long did I even stream Tag Team Racing? I always stream for at least two hours, so it must have been at least that. I wonder if that would make a good highlights video, or if everyone would just, like, hate it. Because it would just be me shitting on the game for 10 or 15 minutes. Which I've considered doing for Super Paper Mario. That, I think, would be a bad idea, because that's a very long RPG game that I kind of, like, hate. And I don't know if it's worth it to do, like, a full playthrough of a game like that, just so I can shit on it the whole time. I'm cool with multiverses. Multiverses is worth, like, a ten-minute video shitting on. That- that's alright. Come on. Tana! I hate it. I hate this grapple. I don't usually struggle with it. At this level, it's just awful. Oh, 
Oh, I did it. Yes, that's what I wanted to do. In fact, yeah, even more. Last minute time saves. It was the sneeze. It was the sneeze of ingenuity. We're good. We're fine. Still got one mask or two masks? Can't have uh, one mask. Okay, here, here's here's the part. Here's the part that sucks. Ah, I missed that. It's all right. Not the end of the world. Are we almost done? Oh no, not this part! I remember this shit! And I just died immediately. Okay. Oh, uh, is that is that near the end, or are there multiple sections like that? I feel like I remember multiple sections like that. Where's my bus? Terrible bus RNG. I know it's not a bus, I don't know what else to call it. Truck, I guess? It's a Murica truck. Another mask there. Well, we're over four hours now. Uh, am I gonna have to come back to this? If this goes too much longer. I haven't had to do that in this playthrough yet. I don't want to have to, but it would prob I'd probably benefit from coming back to the level fresh. I'm gonna stop playing this for two weeks, come back, and then, like, platinum it on my first try. That that's how this always goes, right? TNT. There we go. After that car segment is another grind rail, and then another car segment. That's what I thought. That's what I was worried about. This is indeed a beastly long level. Oh boy. I'm gonna give it one more good attempt. That means I make it to that, like, uh, that Tauna area. If I get that far, and I die again, I think I'm gonna come back fresh. Oh, 138. That's not a good time for the Dinga Dial section. All right, here we go. Why? This is the worst part. This this stack of nitros that she cannot aim for to save her life.
These sections are a breather. The, gr the grind rail sections aren't bad. I th there are probably people who hate them, hate these anyway. I like sections like that in video games. Grind rails and minecarts. Because they're just timing. It's just the same as, like, the platforming ex sections, but easier because it's reduced to... Like, there's less actions you have to worry about. All you gotta worry about is timing a jump. Okay, here's, here's, here's... <laughs> okay. That wasn't too bad. I know this, I know the second one is worse. I know the second one's way worse. I also feel, also feel like I remember a version with the, the regular bandicoots. Like there's one with really fast traffic and a time slow. Okay, I I know I said one more good attempt, but I'm mad about that. I want to keep going. You know what? <sighs> Should I keep going until I get to the end of the level? I feel so close. I know I'm so close. I know I, I was told how much is left. Why do the levels in this game got to be so long, though? Why couldn't this be two levels? This game would be just as good if this were just a Dingadai level and also a Tana level. Maybe it'd even be better. You, you could have just done that. I don't like gauntlet difficulty. I, I like the short, sweet, and difficult kind of levels with lots of checkpoints. Which this has, when it's not time trials. The, ba the base game has plenty of checkpoints, and I appreciate that. For things like the time trials, yeah, these levels could they, could just stand to be plain old shorter. I realize this is this is like an, epi an epitome. This is an extreme example of like long levels in this game, but there are others. It's not just this one. Get the, the TNT, please. Now there's a drone after me. I think it's just plain bad game design to have to have, like, endurance challenges. In the sense that you're just having the player do what they've done a million times before. Like, I, I'm a master at the start of this level, just to get one chance to do the later part of the level. And it's just not fun. No, okay. Don't quite know what happened there, but I'll take it. At 136. I guess I'm also a little bit worn down because I grew up in like the NES era where that was how games were padded. Like, even if there was an option, even if the technology existed for continue systems games would still not have them just because you know if you had to start over from the beginning again that's more hours you're spending in the game that's that's how you get your $60 worth because yes believe it or not NES games were also $60 
Thank God Mega Man games had passwords. As, as infamously difficult as those games were. I say that. This is way- this game is way harder than any Mega Man game. I mean, maybe. I'm not- I'm not counting, like, uh, maybe modern games with post-game stuff. The, like, super end-game, super post-game Battle Network stuff could get pretty challenging. Okay. We got all the shinies. We got all the things we need. We're doing good this time. Jinxing it. I just jinxed it. Shouldn't open my mouth. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> hey, I found a fourth frustration voice. Farts. If it's really, really bad, I just go. I, I, t today I learned about myself. I keep, I keep thinking I'm gonna jump too early. No, no, please. I'm so fucking close. Oh, I missed. A, I missed one. That's okay. Not the end of the world. And then the final traffic section. No, not yet. End. Conclude. One, two, three, four, five. I can't see how many lanes there are. Too many. Here we go. Oh, no! <sighs> no. No, 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 no! <sighs> right there. I could smell the ending. It smelled like lilacs. I, I can't call this now. Not not this close. We're gonna get the end, and we're gonna get Sapphire. I mean, well, if I continue being as anal as I am, then probably not. Probably still gold, but uh, man, imagine. If we do get Sapphire on this, I'm gonna say good enough. <laughs> it's enough of a challenge just to get to the- just to get through this entire level without dying. At least with the insane relics, I can play, like, super careful. You can't do that with Time Trial. You just gotta hold forward no matter what comes at you in Time Trial. And if you died, then you you held forward wrong. You gotta find a different way to hold forward. Kept my mask. I am good on masks. In fact, I can afford to lose one here. That's okay, because I'm gonna get another one soon. Actually, I guess if I kept it, then I would have to I would be able to like not worry about jumping out to that other mask crate. back. Bad drone RNG. So, Darian, what, uh, what Dragon Ball series have you seen? 
I know you've, you've seen Kai and you've seen Super, right? Have you seen the original or have you seen GT? Can't wait for them to do a uh, a new Dragon Ball series. They're gonna they're gonna continue animating from where Super left off, and uh, they're gonna do the whole thing in the superhero style. I could kind of see them doing that. I I I, I hope they don't. It was cool as an experiment, but it it it. It looks like video game cutscenes. I don't want to. I don't want them to animate a Dragon Ball anime in the style of video game cutscenes. Imagine GT Kai. I that, that would like defeat the purpose. GT didn't have any filler. I, arguably, it was all filler, depending on how you wanted to define it. I guess you could like. Uh, You could polish it up a little, because they, they... One of the things that turned people off of GT is that they, like, hard 180'd. Like, uh, 13 episodes into it. Like, I guess you could remove that and get straight into the plot, but then... I don't know. I, I liked the early GT episodes. They, they had, like, that classic Dragon Ball adventuresome charm. I think the big problems with Dragon Ball GT were, uh, one, there was serious fatigue. Like, it came before people actually wanted more Dragon Ball. And, uh, two, no one in the West watched Dragon Ball. They all just watched Z. And GT kinda... kinda tried to... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It tried to recapture a lot of the, the, the feeling of early Dragon Ball. In addition to Z, I think they always had plans to go into a more serious uh, Z-like arc. But when the, uh, when the adventure stuff was not sitting well with fans, they didn't really, like, they didn't change it very gradually or in a very organic way. They just immediately introduced the baby stuff and went full on into like serious serious action drama so it's a li it's a little bit of whiplash there's a whole video about all the uh th there were a lot of things stacked against GT I don't think it was a bad series I know blasphemy Oh, I wasn't far enough. There's also the thing that Jack and I mentioned somewhat frequently, that uh, every aspect of GT felt like an ending. All the characters were old. We, we see where everyone is in, like, the twilight of their lives. There's a... Uh, the Shadow Dragons are, like, they're metaphorical for, like, the consequence of relying on the Dragon Balls too much. And not even metaphorical, but, uh... They try to do things like that to, uh, like, ground the show more. And I think people just, they didn't want grounded Dragon Ball. As much as I like grounded Dragon Ball. And they didn't want to see 
you know, the character, they didn't want it to end. They wanted it to go on forever. They wanted Dragon Ball to be The Simpsons, and so we got Dragon Ball Super, and now Dragon Ball is The Simpsons, and will continue until the end of time. He's kind of getting the same tre treatment the Star Wars sequels are getting. In that now that people have watched Super, people now suddenly... Sorry, I'm trying to... I'm reading chat in interspersed sections. People now suddenly think GT is good in comparison. I think that to a degree that's always going to happen. I don't know how much of that is nostalgia. This might be a mean thing to say, but uh, the vast majority of people are, in my opinion, not very good at critical analysis of the things they watch. I know I sound like a jerk for saying that. Yeah, that's okay. You, you can call me a jerk. I'm, I'm kind of a jerk. I love, I love GT because it, uh, it does a lot of the stuff Super does in that it, uh, it acknowledges and calls back to stuff that had previously happened in Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z before anyone really, like, made a stink about it or demanded them to. Just the fact that they took the writing away from Toriyama instantly made it care more about continuity, because obviously Toriyama has never really cared about continuity. It wasn't written by Toriyama, but at the same time, clearly the people who wrote it cared about the Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball franchise, and they wanted to do something a little more serious with it. I appreciated that. The whole fact that we would revisit the Tuffles after all that time, them being like a, you know, a vital part of the Saiyan origin story and then never coming up again. That was cool. Granted, I mean, Hatchiak did that. We didn't get Hatchiak in the West, but it's cool that they would flesh that out. Android Super Android 17 was dumb. We, we didn't need the Super 17 arc. That's another thing that kind of created Whiplash because, uh, I think that underperformed, and uh, they cut that really short as a result. It's also a shame, because that arc involves, like, all the Dragon Ball villains coming back from hell and wreaking havoc. Which had the potential to be really cool if they, like, followed through with it. Unfortunately, they didn't. Everyone was just kind of a mook. I did, a lot of them didn't even get any dialogue. It was one of those things I talked about where uh, a show is just kind of full of cheap references and doesn't meaningfully call back to the stuff it's it's referencing. Even Cell and Frieza, like they're they're the big name ones that come back, and they barely do anything. The Super 17 thing also kind of, like, it remembered the dragon that uh, Android 17 existed because uh, after the Android saga, he just, he just doesn't come come up at all. Uh, is he even in the is he in the in the Spirit Bomb during the Boo saga? I don't remember. He might have been in that. But that was another thing that GT. Uh, like, cared to remember that this character existed when the show had, you know, forgotten about him completely, that Dragon Ball Z had.
This must be really annoying if someone is watching this because they're a Crash fan and they don't care the slightest bit about Dragon Ball Z. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've said everything I have to say about this, this level. I, I don't have anything new to add. You, you can skip to the end where I finally beat it, and I'm like, oh my god, that was platinum? I'm so glad I don't have to come back to this. What a blessing. What that'll happen. I just spun that because I got two masks. Why not? Okay, there go my masks. That's all right. I'm at the end anyway. Another not amazing time, but that's all right. Vegeta and Nappa's reunion in GT bugs me. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was saying. The, like, the hell... Come on. The hell breakout is just totally... They don't do anything with it. That is definitely the worst part of GT, and I, I really can't defend it. And I don't—I think it would have been better had they not had that need. It, it was like a knee-jerk ratings reaction or something along those lines. I gotta post that video in the Discord if I haven't. It was very informative. It's worse because they do that twice. They do it in GT and they do it in the Fusion Reborn movie and both times they just, they do nothing with it. There's no dramatic reunions, there's no meaningful dialogue between characters. It's just a street full of familiar, uh, streets full of familiar faces but they're all mooks and they just get one-shotted. So like, what's the point of having them? One of the main dudes in the Fusion Reborn movie isn't even, like, a Dragon Ball character. It's just fucking Hitler. They have the two kids fight Hitler. Oh, I forgot the trash bot. Was it from Geekdom 101? I, I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. Hell, even Dragon Ball GT, like, opens with a villain that uh, the original show had totally forgotten about. After Dragon Ball, after the King Piccolo saga, Pilaf just disappears with no fanfare. He's just gone. Which is the case for a lot of Dragon Ball characters. Toriyama just forgets about them and then they never show up again. Rest in peace, launch. We hardly knew ye. I mate Toriyama must have realized that people cared about like continuity and him remembering characters because like Poir came back in Super. Not to a hugely significant degree, but she existed. She had, like, a couple of lines. She helped with Master Roshi's training or something. It was more than nothing. For all we know, she was dead before that. But I guess he, mu he must have thought that uh, that people valued that if 
he did start referencing, like, Dragon Ball Classic stuff again in Super. And, like, it took him long enough. There's a part of me that hopes that, like, uh, Miyamoto has a moment like that. Where he realizes, oh, people do care about story in video games, at least a little bit, and it doesn't completely ruin them. I don't need Mario to be, uh... We don't need it to be like Grand Theft Auto. But you can include that Rosalina storybook, and it doesn't make the game worse, Miyamoto. You can have toads with, like, unique traits. You don't have to limit yourself to toads with hats. It's, it's okay to have real NPCs in Paper Mario, Miyamoto. Or he could just retire. That that would work, too. I'm, I'm ready for a Nintendo without Miyamoto. I'm being mean? Yeah, that's okay. I'll be mean. He's do I'm sorry, he's doing more harm than good And at this point. He has been for like 10 years. Sorry if I'm a little bit salty at this point in the stream. I'm not I'm not that salty. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm talking shit. I'm being perhaps more cynically humorous than usual. Because I'm so fucking tired of being on this level. Stop eating my mask! I need that! I always get to that, that flame box at just... an unfortunate RNG time. Okay, now comes the trash bot, and now comes this part, which I, I have a path. There we go. I have a path for that part. I still gotta figure out, like, a good path for the, the big crossing. The big crossing fucking sucks. I also gotta, like, not get zapped at this part. So far, I don't think I have to be super anal. That's, yeah, come on. I think I can just worry about getting across, and I'll be okay. That doesn't help a lot, because I'm already just kind of worried about getting across. Dragon Ball Minus, which expanded on Bardock's backstory. What was uh, what was that about? Was that related to episode of Bardock in any way? Okay, here we go. No! Ah! <sighs> Five hour stream. Just. I inching closer every time. I know I can do it. Oh, Dragon Ball Minus. That had to do with, uh... Was that where they made Bardock, like, officially Superman's dad? Where he sent Goku off in the spaceship because of his, like, his worry about Frieza? Was that where Jean A first appeared?
I've never fully liked how Bardock was handled. E even the original Bardock special was... I don't think it was great. It was tolerable. I we didn't really need to know about Goku's dad. He has no connection with him. Didn't even have a connection with his race, but... It was okay. Then they did Dragon Ball Minus, an episode of Bardock, and they just made him stupid. He's just a character who gets worse every time he appears. Sorry, Bardock fans. I liked it better when Goku was at most implicitly Superman-like, and not just blatantly Superman. I liked it when uh, Bardock was of gray morality. If not just, like, downright evil, as Saiyans kind of tend to be. I don't think Goku himself would really care about Bardock. This is going to sound like the weirdest segue, but they do that in Hey Arnold, and it kind of bugged me a lot. There's a lot of episodes revolving around, well, not a lot of episodes, but a couple of episodes, including the only two-parter in the series, revolving around Arnold's dead parents, who were these just... Incredibly unrealistic Indiana Jones style motherfuckers. I know, unrealistic in a cartoon, but it, it was a, a comparatively grounded cartoon. And yet, then you have these like Mary Sue Indiana Jones world traveling dudes who went missing nine years ago. And I don't care about these characters, I don't know them. I care about, like, the wacky dudes in the boarding house and, and the kids at the... These are the characters I know in this show. These are the ones I want to... I, I don't care about his dead par his parents. And they keep pushing it. And I don't know why he would care about his parents, because they left when he was one. And when parents leave when a child is one, the child does not remember or give a shit about those parents. That's how real life works. He's not in his room every night moping about them being missing. No. That's also, like, probably the only narrative flaw I have with Hunter x Hunter. A lot of Gon revolves around him searching for his, fa his father, who, like, left their family at a young age. And when that happens, usually kids don't care about finding and bonding with their father, who abandoned their family at a young age. It's like a weird thing that comes up in a lot of anime, the idea of, uh... The importance of, like, paternal bonds. Even if the father is, like, a deadbeat or just an asshole. Speaking of Goku... Eh, get it? He's a bad father. I know, uh, Goji doesn't like when people make that joke. He, he thinks people give Goku's parenting too much too much crap. I don't. I, I think a lot of the stuff that he does, even setting aside, like, the family aspect, he's just kind of a really selfish person at times. He has heroic moments, too. I, you know, Namek and Frieza being the really obvious one, but... It's not just, like, one little thing. Throughout the entire Dragon Ball series and all versions of it, he's extremely ready to abandon his friends and family at a moment's notice on a whim for, like, years and years on end. He barely says goodbye. He doesn't feel bad about it. I don't... Like, he doesn't really care about anybody. Goku's a cold motherfucker. Glad they don't don't do that with One Piece. Oh yeah. Do you think they're gonna have like a, a like a bonding moment? Is Luffy gonna meet Dragon and be like, "Oh my God, Dad, where have you been? You went to the cigarette store and never came back." Okay, 
don't know how I landed on that. We're fine. That part sucks. Why'd they have to put the hardest part at the end of the level? Why did they do that? At the end of this excruciatingly long level. Because Luffy knows who his dad is, and he knows that he's like a revolutionary. He just kind of doesn't talk about him or seem to care about him. Which makes sense, because he wasn't around for Luffy's childhood, and that's what happens when you're not around for your child's childhood. They don't care about you. Luffy's not like, he doesn't seem bitter towards him, because that's just not the kind of, the per the kind of person Luffy is. But it makes sense. It always fe feels weird to say, but One Piece is a very well-written show with terrible pacing issues. And that kind of kills it for a lot of people. Understandably so. I think at this point, I would say my top three Shonen series are uh, Hunter x Hunter, My Hero Academia, which I also have a lot of respect for the writing for. Like, the, the, the writing and the novelty are, like, the big two things for me. And, uh, One Piece is number three. I think those are the three best written shonen, shonen action series that I've seen. I used to, to count Yu Yu Hakusho as up there, but, uh, it's still good, especially the dub. I love the show to death. But re-watching it, it does rely on a lot of really, like, overdone tropes. Even at the time that the show existed, they were kind of overdone. Also, if you pay attention, like, the solution to every Yusuke situation early on in the show is for him to, like, be willing to kill himself. Early Yusuke is all about martyrdom. Which is inspiring, once. Maybe not as the solution to every single problem you face. Then, then it gets a little, uh... Then it gets a little corny, if you pay attention. Yes, Yu Yu Show is, is a shonen action show. I love Yu Yu Show. It, 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 it has some flaws. Less flaws than the vast majority of shonen shows, but not, it's not flawless. Hunter x Hunter is, by comparison, almost flawless, in my opinion. And it actively, uh... It actively goes out of its way to try to subvert a lot of the tropes that you expect from those kinds of shows. Definitely my top five. I still think you use in my top five. I don't know what would be number four if not Yu Yu. I don't consider Dragon Ball particularly well written. Bleach has shit writing, but it's fun to watch anyway. That show is just pulled out of his ass as he goes. I kind of feel the same about Naruto, but uh, I, Bleach is like... I, I, I just... The, the, the world of Bleach is more inviting to me, which is very important to me. As I pointed out in, like, the Twilight Princess Skyward Sword streams. Whether I would- whether I, I find a world interesting and inviting to be in is a huge part of my experience with a series. And the world of Skyward Sword was so much more appealing to me than the world of Twilight Princess. Naruto's ninja world kind of feels like a slight- a less egregious Harry Potter. But it's got some of the same vibes. And there's always, like, some kind of wizard slash ninja war or conflict between factions of government trying to control magic slash ninjutsu. I made... You know what? I made an, an, a, a comparison when Jack and I were watching My Hero Academia. If My Hero Academia is... Uh, the capitalist version of this, like, mercenaries and missions system. 
then uh, Naruto is the communist version. And I don't say that demeaningly, like, oh, those fucking commies. More that, like, there's a cultural difference between the show. Where in My Hero Academia, everyone has to, like, have a brand. They have to sell themselves. They have, they have to, like, market themselves as a hero to be the most successful hero. And it's, it's kind of a competition in that way. In Naruto, it's much more like, this is just what we do. Everyone works towards the, for the good of the village. We go on missions. Also, My Hero Academia is a very grounded series compared to most shonen. Like, when you consider the morality systems in these shows, uh, My Hero Academia works on very similar to, like, our world reasoning. Because it's based off of, like, our world, just with a difference in continuity, and that, you know, superpowers appeared. Deku would, like, react in horror to a lot of the other shonen protagonists who just, like, kill people all the time. Because that's something you can't really do in My Hero Academia. Because, like, much like our world, that's very illegal and very inadvisable. Jack started a joke of, like, Deku going around other shonen worlds. And just being kind of cautious around their protagonists until he asks how many people they've killed. Goku does, like, almost never kill. He's very, very reluctant to do so, and the only people he does are, like, ultra monsters. Like Cell and Boo. Technically, he didn't even kill Frieza. Naruto's your top, huh? Is there just not a lot that particularly that particularly bothers you in Naruto, or uh, you just like it despite its flaws? I get a lot of continuity questions in Naruto. It feels like, you know how in Lord of the Rings there's always the question of if these eagles could fly to Mordor, why didn't we just take them there at the start of the movie? It feels like there's a question like that in every, every chapter of Naruto. There's always some kind of big oversight that kind of blows everything up if you stop and think about it. Which is the same for Bleach, but again, that's just, I don't consider Bleach a good show. I just consider it more fun to watch of the two. Uh-oh. That's alright. Lost my other mask, but I'm at the end. Not the best time. Naruto was also one of my... one of my first anime. That was probably... Naruto was probably about when I started to pay attention to anime? No. No, not, Naruto was like the last anime they showed regularly on Toonami. After a point, it was mostly Naruto. I watched, like, uh, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon. Those are some of the earliest anime that showed on Cartoon Network, but, uh... I think when I really started paying attention to the fact that it was anime... Was, uh... In, like, not in... Toonami's heyday, when they were really... When they had, like, a block full of the stuff. With, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, Rurouni Kenshin. I remember those were back-to-back. -back. Ah! I went early and I missed a block. Yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho and Kenshin are two of, like, the earliest ones that I remember really paying attention to! 
I think Naruto came a little bit after that. Heck, I think I remember Naruto and Four Kids One Piece airing on Toonami at about the same time. Which, it's a crying shame that there's still a surprising number of people who think that the 4Kids dub of One Piece is the only dub of One Piece. Which is baffling to me. I don't know how you, you have to live under a rock. You, you really have to be not paying attention to One Piece to not know that there's a newer, fuller dub of it. It's frustrating at times because I see videos on YouTube of, uh, like, sub versus dub character, and, uh, it'll be the four kids dub. Or, like, what the dub changed in One Piece, not acknowledging that there is a dub that did not change things in One Piece. If Roroni Kenshin happened later, we might, might be in a similar situation with that. Or if multiple versions of it aired. Both both dubs of One Piece aired on television. Uh, Roroni Kenshin was interesting because it was first dubbed by... I don't, I don't remember who. Bang Zoom, I think? Under the title Samurai X. Which was a very low-quality, localized dub that changed names and is the namesake of that YouTuber, uh, Cory X Kenshin, because the female lead, Kaoru, in that dub had her name changed to Cory. Thankfully, that was not the dub that aired on Toonami. Toonami aired a, uh, a Sony dub. Which was still not amazing, but it was a better quality and did not make like drastic changes like that. It was not it was not a heavily censored dub, if censored at all. There's also a lot of dubs that are censored for their TV airings, but not for like home video releases. That a lot of people a lot of people don't seem to like know. Because obviously the, the censored TV airings are the ones that people are going to meme about. And then people end up thinking that's the only dub that exists, is the, is the edited version. Yu-Gi-Oh! had, believe it or not, Yu-Gi-Oh! had an unedited dub. By four kids, no less. Four Kids Entertainment got their, their uh, voice cast back and attempted to make an uncut dub of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. The cast sounded extremely tired and like they didn't want to be dubbing the show again. And uh, it only lasted nine episodes, if I remember correctly. There were three home media releases. <sighs> where did where the where the float go? There were three home media releases of the uh, uncut Yu-Gi-Oh dub. And, uh, that was all they got. I don't know if just no one wanted an uncut dub of Yu-Gi-Oh! Or if maybe no one knew what it was. I did, maybe they didn't trust four kids with an uncut dub. That wouldn't surprise me either. It would have to be jarring to hear, like, the four kids' voices. Joey Wheeler, New York accent. Trying to do like a like a serious uncensored take on the series. I I I, I yeah, I, I would understand those people. I, I couldn't take four kids seriously enough to go through like a full uncut dub like that. They kind of dug their own graves with their reputation. I 
can't wait to, uh, there's gonna be, like, an Oda interview for, uh, Ichiro Oda, the author of One Piece. Or some comment from him. And it's gonna turn out that he had no idea that there was a second dub of One Piece. He's gonna be like, he's gonna be like, I like the Sanji voice, the one that plugs his nose when he speaks. Wait, you mean that's not the Sanji voice? It's a weird combination of, of like, frustration and also kind of endearingness. When uh, manga authors know so little about the franchises that they're supposed to, you know, be in charge of. Toriyama and Araki probably get the most grief about that. To the point that, uh, Araki Forgot is such a meme with Jojo. He just introduces plot elements and then promptly forgets about them. They never come up again. I actually tried to uh, upload the uncut dub of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I have it on DVD. I own, I own the DVDs for that dub. Because I thought that, uh, like, no one... It failed, no one would care about it. But, uh, no. The... the Japanese companies still they still cared about it. They took it off YouTube. Ah I think I saw someone do a video edit of what the current One Piece arcs would sound like with the four kids' voices. Interesting. I was watching a dub recently, and it was so bad that I felt that I could do better. And I don't remember what that was. There are times I wished that we had gotten to uh, continue doing Bleacher Bridge, because we had a lot of ideas for that. And if I had all the time in the world, and I didn't have to worry about, you know, money... I might have continued it. Money especially since we didn't it, it was a it was a fan project, it was a bridge series. We didn't actually like pay our actors for season one. We would have liked to have started paying people in season two. But uh, that was Didn't have the money, didn't have the time to keep working on it. And especially if uh, if it's gonna get taken down then you know, what's the point? It's a shame that all these abridged series have to, uh, like, fight the anime companies to exist. E even the biggest one, Dragon Ball Z abridged, has a long history of just fighting with Toei. It does depend on what you do, though. Like, some are more litigious about it than others. Now, litigious is too respectful a word. Some are more anal about it than others. And unfortunately, the owners of uh, Bleach are uh, some of the more anal ones. I've considered doing a, uh, I've considered doing a Code Lyoko, a bridge type series. Still could conceivably happen, but uh, at the very least, I'm confident that wouldn't get taken down. In fact, I'm pretty sure the entirety of Code Lyoko is available for free on YouTube. Same for uh, Totally Spies. The French are great. I love the French. French anime, French animation studios are they're bros. They want people to see their work, and it's good work. They do good work. France is my favorite company for anime. Uh, company, the company of France is my favorite country for animation. I don't have like a ton of shows that I know of from there, but the ones that I do know of are like really high quality. I recommend a walkfu to any fans of uh, fantasy animation because it's amazingly well animated and has some really interesting, like, Avatar The Last Airbender kind of world building. Very underrated show. Awful dub, though. Don't watch the English dub. 
I think like season three and on, they get a real cast that are like Funimation actors and actually know how to voice act. But the first season, first two seasons, very bad dub. Code Lyoko's dub also was not great. It was at least watchable though. And you had to, uh, you had Goku from the big green dub. He did a voice. I think it was the same studio. fire block. I probably should have taken that hit, but at this point, I just want to get to the end of the level, so the mask is more important to me. I'm making mistakes. I'm missing boxes. I do have to jump for that. Okay, noted. I thought maybe I didn't have to jump for it. I could just, like, bash through it, but no. I don't even have to make the last line. I can just, like, grapple from there. Alright. New attempt. This really is just Ratchet and Clank, these sections. Especially since Tana controls more like Ratchet than uh, Crash does. She's got that kind of more slow, methodical PS2 era platforming. At least she has a real double jump, unlike any of the uh, PS2 platformer dudes. Can I get a big vehicle? Yeah, that one right there. That's what I want. This shitty frogger. Ah! It's always that row, the third row on, in the second group. We are now over five hours. We're gonna do it. I'm not. I'm not gonna go this far and not finish this level. It's so long with every attempt. It takes so long to get back to that spot just for another try. I don't think I did very long streams when I did the... How long did Stormy Ascent take me? That one I made sure to get the Platinum Relic. Even that! What was it, like a, like a four-hour stream, maybe?
I can just cut out this whole like run up section. I can just chop off this entire like ding it owl section and then resume the stream when we get to Tana. Just stop talking between now and then. I won't. That's too much work and I'm lazy, but that'd be one one way to accommodate for the long bouts of just silence. Mate, you sound like you want me to end it. Do you want me to give up? I don't give up. Stormy Ascent was 6 hours, 21 minutes. I see. Well, we're not quite there yet. I came in expecting this to be a long stream. I didn't expect it all to be one level. Well, so much of it to be one level. Uh, nope. Out of the way. Go away, drones. There go my masks. That's okay, we're at the end. <laughs> if this is gold, this means I'll have to do this level even more off-stream to get platinum. But you know what? That's alright, because I'll be able to do it with my air conditioner running. I was right about Hey Arnold going into it insofar as it is a lot more, like, real than a lot of cartoon shows. Even though most of the episodes were just goofy cartoon shit. There, there were a couple that, like, hit pretty hard. And it makes perfect sense why people, uh, like, cared about Helga the most, because, uh... She just had an abusive home life. There's, no, there's not really, like, any other way to put it. I don't think it's something that you would, like, see in, an, in an, a cartoon show that was, that was for kids. Like, it's amazing that they got away with it in the 90s. They definitely... it wouldn't be approved now. Not to say there wouldn't be, like, an interest in seeing it, but, you know, the executives would never let it fly. I think the, the roughest e episode was probably when Helga goes to see a child psychologist. And she just, like, spills everything. It wasn't like Stewie and Brian in the vault. It wasn't like that, but... It was kind of a similar thing, but more tasteful. And in line with the show. So, like, walks to preschool alone in the rain at the age of five. Because her dad's just ignoring her and her mom doesn't make lunch or anything. Alright, fine. I'll stop talking about cartoons and I'll pay attention. The first part is fine. I, I, get, to the, I get to this row. And then we have this. Okay, third row. 
Fourth row. I don't know what that noise was, but we made it. All right. Just, uh, just got to take another 15 seconds off of that for platinum. Boy, oh boy, is that going to be fun. That was like a happy Mickey Mouse. It was, it was like Mickey Mouse because I was worried I wasn't going to make it. Uh, what's next? Next is the crate escape. So next time we have that. One, two, three, four. We have five levels left to go. I'm anticipating these are going to be hard. I don't know how much of a stream they'll... I guess we'll see how the next stream of this goes. I'll be starting on the crate escape, which itself will probably take me a while. We'll do three or four ep three or four levels next time, and then we'll finish it by getting the final platinum. That will be my plan. Uh, I have more time to stream these days. I will uh, be back with another solo stream either sometime this weekend or next Wednesday. I'm doing uh, solo streams every Wednesday. But we're going to get to the end of it. We end of this. We made progress. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you this weekend.